Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Cheers, everybody. Happy Friday. Popping open a beer here for y'all. <sighs> Cheers to Cunt and Super Saiyan Joku. Let me hit it for you, motherfuckers. Here you go, Super Saiyan Joku. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> Cheers, Joku. Let me hit it for the cunt, our resident Australia. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready, because the cunt is here. Cheers, the cunt. Cheers, brov. Oh, yeah. I learned another one. Brov. Do people say brov a lot? Brov. Oh, I, 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 Will Osprey says it a lot, so I'm all like, What up, bruv? Oh, yeah. Cheers, motherfucker. Happy Friday. Uh, it's been a good week, a better week. You know, I'm learning to stay positive, regardless of uh, haters. Haters in your life. Eventually, the truth comes out, and the real feelings and, and shit comes out to light. But you can't let these motherfuckers bring you down. Uh, you're just going to keep on moving. And, uh, and good things will come. Today was a badass fucking day. I made a lot of money. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers. Oh, you say bra, not brav. What up, bra? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or might. Yeah, I like might better than brav. Anyways, uh, yeah. So uh, I just want a few things I want to talk to you guys before we start the fucking show. Is that there are now three fucking channels that I have. We have this one, the Underground Broadcast. We have the Emergency Broadcast channel, which is what you're watching. And the Illegal Broadcast channel. Why is there three? Well, because the main one got banned from live streaming because we were fucking up. So now we have the Emergency one. And during the Emergency Broadcast is where we're going to be streaming the live and shit. And uh, it's for, 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 for the moment. Uh... But then I made the illegal underground broadcast channel. Uh, you can look it up and subscribe if you want. Uh, but on that one specifically, we are going to be doing, well, as the channel says, the illegal things. And uh, we are going to have a WrestleMania Night 1 party uh, next week, I think. Is it next week? I think it is, WrestleMania. Uh, so that way, if we get a strike... It'll be in another channel. We don't have to worry about getting banned. Uh, but I don't think we will because I'm not going to make it big like I did last time. I'm going to keep it small and uh, fuck everyone who, who's, who, who argues and says, make it bigger. We want to see. No, no, I can't. We're not getting fucking banned. The, the small little picture you're seeing, you're seeing it. And that's all it's going to be. But we are going to watch it. Uh, all of it. And uh, night one and night two. I'll tell you like that. And pretty much, uh, if we get away with it, we'll do all the pay-per-views like that. No sound. Just me talking or responding to your comments. Drinking and smoking and chilling. Uh, but that's uh, that's what we're going to gonna be doing uh, from here on. So, cheers to y'all. Don't miss out on that. I think it's next week. Uh, I'll post a video with a link and all that shit. Uh, I'll post the links also on the social medias. Uh, but remember, it is on the other channels and shit. Uh, tonight's show is gonna be cool. I am gonna spoil the entire uh, Kong and, and Godzilla. I'm gonna show all the kaiju fights. Uh, we're gonna talk about the X Men episode and shit. Uh, some DC and Marvel news, comic book nerd ass, and of course we gotta talk about celebrity perverts because you know how that goes. Uh, so get ready for tonight because we got a, a a decent show for you tonight. Um, but let's get started with the motherfucking comments. You know how we do. 
Anything you send to my social medias, uh, uh, Twitter is at sonoman 665 because apparently the underground broadcast is too damn long for a Twitter handle. Tw Twitter handle. And it is Twitter, because until he changes it to www.x.com, I'm calling it Twitter, bitches. Um, and then for Instagram is at the underground broadcast, uh, underscore after the underground and whatever. You see it here. And TikTok is the underground broadcast. Anything you send me on IG or Twitter, I will post here. And I'll show it to you all. I actually had uh, Gomer Kyle this uh, earlier this week, y'all. He was in uh, if, if Atlanta uh, visiting a friend. Uh, we got to give him the shout out to his friend uh, uh, who's... Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I know he's he's having a heart surgery. So prayers out to our friend, uh, Gomer Cow and his best friend out there. But he was visiting Atlanta and he took some pictures and shit. And uh, and then he took some pictures of like this this logo that was uh, uh, fucking outside uh, of his friend's hospital. And it says, legal representation, the fly lawyer. Oh, look at that pimp daddy, theflylawyer.com. I got to tell you, man, I'm glad I never needed a lawyer in my life. But if I ever did, that's the motherfucker I'm calling for sure. And, and I'm going to be like, hey. Bring those two hotties along. Oh yeah. Mm. And uh, and then over here, Gomer, he says he took a pictures with the Olympic shit that they had there in 96, uh, where Kurt Angle broke his neck wrestling and won the gold medal. Hey, Gomer, who's that Mexican photo bombing you there on the side? Like this and shit. Fuck that guy. I would have been like, hey, get the fuck out of here, you son of a bitch. I'm trying to take a picture. You dick. That's what I would have been like. But anyways, uh, yeah, Gomer, thank you for sending that, and we're, we're, we're praying for your friend, bro. He's It's uh, Gomer's best friend. Uh, heart surgeries are pretty, uh, they're, they're good nowadays. They're way better than they were 10, 15 years ago, man. So I, I, I'm, well, I'm, my prayers, and I, I know your friend's going to be all right, bud. I just know it. Believe me. I did have a Super Saiyan Joku send me this on IG. He says, my sweet tooth gets the best of me. I'm just getting started. It's gonna be a long night, ain't that not? Ain't that right, son of man? Meow. At the underground broadcast. Cheers, my flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. THC 600 milligrams. Hashtag nerds rope. Hashtag 100 milligrams. Hashtag watermelon rings. 400 milligrams. Hashtag cotton, can cotton candy gummies, hashtag marijuana, and hashtag smoke weed every day. I'm not, I'm not going to sample that. We'll get in trouble for sure. But, uh, yeah, you got some gummies there. You know what What really, uh, the watermelon rings, I mean, those look like real candies and shit. Uh, but what really excites me is these nerd pop. What is it, ropes? What is it? Is it like, like a string? Joku? Is it a string? You should have taken a picture of what it looks like. Um, it, they're nerds. So is it like gummies? Like, cause they sell at the store, and I love these. They sell these gummies that are like they they I don't know like they these little balls of gummy, just chewy gummy, and then they put all these nerds in them, and so you grab one and you you it's fucking badass. Is that what this is like? Cause that shit's legit. Uh, keep out of reach of children and animals. Oh, 600 milligrams per rope? Shit. No, he says that the lucky Americans, not all of us, uh, wherever the fuck this guy lives, uh, because over here where I'm from, there's not legal and shit. I gotta go buy dirt weed from these motherfuckers down the street and shit. It pisses me off. I swear to God, this, this shit is like I'm, I'm smoking pesticides and shit. That's why I gotta go buy these, these uh, vanilla cream fucking blunts. So I can actually have something good to smoke because if not, it, it feels like I'm fucking smoking uh, uh, pesticides and shit. Some cat piss, a cat piss on the weed and shit. But luckily the blunt helps cover it up. Fuck you, Goku. Joku, for being in a state where you get all these badass shit that we don't. Oh, Gomer Kyle is here. Let me hit it for Gomer. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. 
Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. And uh, I did show, uh, I showed your 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 pictures that you sent me on Twitter. And uh, and we all wished your friend uh, a good recovery. Hope he's doing all right, bud, on the real. Uh, yeah, we gave, him, we gave him a shout out here in the channel. You know how we do. Woke Pat for life. Motherfuckers. Cheers. Um, but let me start with the comments because it is a long. There are a lot of comments today. Uh, uh, actually, right away, the one. We like a Monday. Got a lot of comments, and I've been getting a lot of comments all of a sudden. I don't know what else the fuck's going on. I think we're going viral again. Anyways, let's see what's going on here. Uh, the first comment is this guy named Tropic Vibe. It might be a girl. I don't know. They got some keyboards on the avatars. So that's pretty cool. It says, yeah, it's talking on the colored races. It's a thing now. The little girl who doesn't like white people. Uh, she says, yeah, real safe. Keep believing that. As safe as the girl that got stabbed in the neck in a bodega a couple of days ago because she didn't give some dude her number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you what, it wasn't a white person that stabbed that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably my cousin or something. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the truth. Bitch, give me your number. Ah, yeah, that shit happens, bro. That is like, I try not to talk to no one when I go to the corner store. There's a lot of fucking weird motherfuckers and shit. You know, you don't make eye contact. You don't talk to no one. I don't know fucking crackheads out there. They fucking, I don't even know what the fuck they do all day walking around and shit. Motherfuckers. Do you even eat? Some of them look, look like they're fucking eating better than I am and shit. And I'm the one who has a job. What the fuck? So I'm gonna say maybe I should start doing heavy drugs. Well, I'll look better and shit, live a better life. I don't know. I'm just you know throwing it out there. What do you guys think? Anyways, cheers, Tropic Vibe. Thank you for commenting. Cheers. I think we got a few subscribers. I don't know. I don't pay attention to it anymore as much as I used to. Um. Gomer, he says that his friend's coming home finally next week after 45 days. That's good, bro. I was saying that the uh, heart surgeries nowadays are, are a lot better than they were fucking 10, 15 years ago. I mean, they can do a heart stint and you'll be out that afternoon, like within an hour or two. They'll let you go. It's crazy, you know. Technology. That's amazing. It's amazing. Medical technology and shit. Uh, again, a new guy on the colored races is a thing now, and it's probably a guy who just made an account because they're gonna have a tar and it just says user, a bunch of fucking random letters and numbers. But it says, any race is capable of having racist, uh, I don't know what WS means, mindset. Does anybody know what WS means? Races, white supremacies, mindset? Maybe that's what that is. Even black Americans. Especially when you were raised in America, k k k k k k k k where it's ingrained in our society. Don't even surprise me anymore. Um, I don't know. I will say one thing about this uh, co specific comment is that I feel that, you know, because I think every race is a little racist. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you right now, my, my parents are really racist, like, I accepted a lot of people uh, growing up, and they didn't. Uh, they would judge a lot of people uh, by how they looked or or even the color of their skin. And I'd be like, why are you saying that? Do you even know that person? Do you know? Like, maybe something, you know, my, my, my mom, we'd see somebody walking down the street, and my mom's like, look at that drug addict. I'd be like, why are you saying that? Maybe his car broke down. He's walking. You know, it's 120 degrees outside. I'd be sweating if I was walking down the block, mom. What the fuck is your problem? You know, shit like that. So I think I think all of us are raised, you know, uh, races are all a little racist. But, you know, most of us try to accept one another. I know I do. And shit. You know, people judge me and don't want to even be next to me sometimes. Sons of bitches. Uh, but I will say one thing. I feel like black people in general turned more racist when the BLL, BLM movement was created. And not only that, but white people certainly turned more racist too. And not towards like fucking uh, towards blacks or browns. They turned really racist towards their own kind and shit. 
Um, I just realized I got the TV on in the background. There's like lightning going on and shit. I just turned it off. Um, yeah, it's like white people got really racist towards Browns, really racist. Uh, look, because I had some white friends who stopped talking to me, who stopped talking to me and called me a Trump supporter because I didn't vote. I didn't vote for Biden nor for Trump, but they call me a Trump supporter and a racist because I didn't want to go march downtown with the BLMs. And I was like, well, I mean, first of all, I'm not black. I'm Mexican. And second of all, uh, there's like looting going on and shit. And, and, and what if something happens and I get shot or I arrest it? I'm like, I don't want to go. No, I'm, I'm fine, bro. I'm going to stick here. And uh, the piece of shit, white boy, because he's a white motherfucker. Didn't even know a, a, a fucking word of Spanish or nothing. Uh, motherfucker goes out in the sun and gets sunburned. But the motherfucker piece of shit has the nerve to call me a Trump supporter and to call me a racist. And then he stopped talking to me. Go figure. Even though, like, even a week before... And none of that shit had gone down. We're playing online and he's saying the most racist fucking Asian jokes and the racist fucking these these jokes and shit like that. But all of a sudden, I'm the fucking racist because I don't want to go march. That's a potential fucking incident downtown. Uh, but whatever. Yeah. People got brainwashed and people turned really racist towards fucking browns. Basically. You know. I, I've experienced more racism for uh since since the pandemic started then i have my whole life and i've always my whole life i've always experienced racism there's a bunch of friends that could tell you like people judge you by how you look and i know shit people judge me by how i look my whole life they've judged me by how i look they don't take a second to to to, to know me to know that i'm probably 10 times smarter than they'll ever be in their lives and shit i got more creativity on the tip of my fucking pinky than you do in your whole fucking body piece of shit but no you don't take a time to learn or know anything find someone new no 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 just look at him and say oh fuck that guy he's weird looking fuck you anyways cheers where the fuck you are you don't even have a real name you dumbass cheers uh he has cerebral palsy too. Oh man, that sucks, bro. Um, that's like what uh, what's his name? Jr. has right. I think that's what Jr. has. Getting old sucks, bro. Uh, you start getting stuff. Uh, all I can say is that you have really no idea how strong your thoughts are. Uh, people call it prayer, whatever. I call it your 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 internal dialogue. When you're not actually talking, and you're talking in your head, I think that voice that's talking in your head that has more impact in life than your actual real voice. Uh, and I and I and I think that if you just fucking learn how to use that and stay positive. And, and not think so neg not let it talk to you in your head negatively things tend to, to to get better you know there's a big difference between waking up in the morning and saying today is going to be a good day there's a big difference between saying that and saying today is a great day because when you say today is going to be a great day rather than today is a great day you're already doubting it might be you know what I'm saying so you know I'm keeping uh, positive thoughts for your friend bro and I think that if we all think positive and you tell your friend to you know it's important it's important for that person too then it's not just you praying for them and thinking positive for them but they themselves have to have, that's what they say you got to help yourself you also have to keep those negative thoughts away from yourself in order to you know bring good vibes and energy towards you we're all waves and vibrations when you get down to the molecular level. And if you're vibrating in a negative vibration, then what do you think you're going to fucking attract or create in your world? So, you know, it's it's hard to explain it to somebody sometimes. Uh, it really is because not everybody understands 
Uh, but as long as you explain them that you just have to, whenever you hear that little voice that's saying like, oh, fuck, this is going to happen. Oh, shit. Oh, no. change it. Change that little voice. And make it say something better. Uh, it helps. And uh, and you'll see. You'll see. You will see the change in your life. Uh, I'm starting to see it a lot. Uh, like today, I had a fucking, like I said, I made a lot of money. Um, and I could have kept working. Uh, but I decided to call it quits, and, and, and you know, I said, all right, I don't want to get greedy either. So, yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, we got another uh, comment here on the same video. This little racist girl is really popular all of a sudden. I posted this video almost two weeks ago, and we're barely getting comments on it. God damn it. But all stay, all stay, 626, or all state, or whatever. I think I experienced every possible emotion watching this video. I still don't know exactly what I watched. I like some sort of, it's like some sort of fever dream. But I liked it, I think. Well, don't worry. A lot of people are a little taken back when they see me. And they're really taken back when they hear me. It's shit. Um, but you know what? Uh, I'm like a tequila shot. It's hard to swallow. Once you get it down, it's nice and warm in your belly. Oh yeah! Cheers! There we go. Let me in there. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheers. All state. Oh, the cunt. On X-Men 97 actually sucks. That was so ass. It's only fair you gotta fart down Fledge's throat, goddamn hat-wearing Hollywood bum sniffers. That's what he deserves for making Gabin look like a bot booty grabbing hairdresser from Seattle. They did him wrong. They did him wrong. I mean, I'm not gonna try to go back and talk more about it because we already did on the last episode. This, this, this. We're gonna focus on the new episode tonight. Uh, but yeah, they did. They just nobody dressed like that in the '90s. Nobody. Especially not me. All right, I would have if that would have been fly in the nineties. I would have dressed like that, but I didn't. Nobody dressed like that in the nineties. That's fucking dumb. Uh, so they fucked up there. And his hair. Nobody had that hair hairstyle either. Some bullshit. He already had a hairstyle when when he didn't wear the thing. He wore a ponytail. So I don't know why you didn't keep it G. It kept it real and shit. But anyway, so move on. Indie Phantom, oh yeah, Indie Phantom hasn't been online and uh, on the live for a while, but motherfucker still comments. I appreciate this motherfucker, OG motherfucker. But let me hit it for this Canuck. I was pledging allegiance. Uh, do people pledge allegiance in other countries the way we do? You put your hand on your heart and shit. The cut. In your country, do they do ass like that? This blunt's coming apart. I gotta lick it. You gotta lick it before you kick it. You gotta lick it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Indie Phantom on the Star Wars doesn't represent me video. He says... Oh yeah, I care even less about Star Wars no than uh, Star Wars now than George Lucas does. Disney is where franchises go to die horribly. Cheers, Sonny Boy. Oh yeah, nobody's called me Sonny Boy in a long time and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew this bitch in, uh, a long time ago. Uh, she had the hots for me and she would call me Sunshine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was fucking badass when she go, hey, sunshine. I'm like, oh, what up, bitch? Ha <laughs> yeah, 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 I like that. Sunny boy, I like that. I haven't, I haven't, somebody used to call me Sunny all the time. What up, Sunny? But I think because he thought I meant my name was Sunny, like S-O-N-N-Y. I was like, dumbass. I was like, but I just let him continue calling me Sunny. I was like, ah, I'm not going to fucking whatever. You idiot. <laughs> the sun in the sky <laughs> yeah yeah uh, we got a shitty anthem that's about it I'm not real patriotic like some of those cunts probably do though 
Yeah, I guess everyone puts a hand on their on their. I just, I just don't understand, like pledging allegiance. I mean, that's fucking. That's almost like you're saying this is God to me. That's fucking fucking weird, man. I've always thought about. It. There was one little girl in class when we were growing up. And one time I used to get mad because I, I didn't want to stand up sometimes, and they would stand up and shit, not fucking shit. And this little girl never fucking. I remember her name. I'm not gonna say it. I'll say her first name. I remember her last name. Uh, her first name was Erica. But she would sit down. She would never stand. Nothing. She'd never get in trouble. And one time I went and told the teacher, Hey, if she doesn't fucking get to say it, then neither can I. And she goes, You fucking, you, you better stand up and say it. Because, or else you get in trouble. And how come she gets away with it? Because it's part of her religion. I said, what the fuck? I went and asked her what she was. Uh, she was a Jehovah's Witness. And so, you know, they don't believe in nothing but God. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, she didn't She didn't celebrate birthdays or had parties or Christmas or presents or nothing fun in life. No dancing, no cheering, no holding hands. Nothing. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened to that little girl. I never saw her after elementary school. Maybe she ascended. She became an ascended master. I don't know. Who knows? Cheers to Erica and cheers to Indie Phantom. <sighs> All right, right. Let's see who's next. Oh, Gomer, Kyle, this son of a bitch. Uh, where is he? Fucking shit. Here you go. Cheers on the on the reading the comments video. He says cheers. Uh. Hang on, let me just fix this a little bit. It's all in the live here for you guys, motherfucker. So this isn't always perfect. Gomer says, cheers, my friend. Sorry I had to run last week. Still down here in Chattanooga and Melissa came down. Oh yeah. Got the wife down there, Gomer. Nice. Hopefully I'll be home and back in my central time zone by this Friday because I'm in the Serenity Now stage. Yeah, I bet you fucking going to a different... You know, but I'll say one thing, man. I didn't experience jet lag or any difference when I when I I went to Egypt a few years ago. I mean, I you know I've been to different time zones, but that was the mo the biggest change in time zones because it's like night and day, you know, like completely ten hours away. And I didn't experience any kind of jet lag, or I might have just been really excited too. So I wasn't tired, and even when I came back, I mean, I didn't need to readjust to anything to be honest with you it was the weirdest thing um but i know the time change this year has been ass to me i hate it i'm still not used to it it's been already like almost a month since the time has changed and i'm still not used to it so yeah uh gomer continues he says we did do some sightseeing in atlanta we showed those pictures by the way gomer earlier Cause that's where my friend was in the hospital. Uh, he says, "Send you pics in to share." Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Live. Bitches. Cheers, Gomer. We showed our pictures earlier. For you, motherfuckers. Maybe she had one on the Cosby Pudding Pops. Oh! Cosby Pudding Pops. Because <laughs> you like to cut the, the pudding. Nah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not the guy with the, with the impersonations. That was another asshole. Anyways, fuck that guy. <laughs> Anthony Timmons. Oh, this fucking piglet motherfucker. I like, I like this guy. On the Star Wars Doesn't Represent Me video, he says, Star Wars only cares about Kathleen Kennedy's fragile ego and all of her fat, ugly, purple-haired feminist minions. Star Wars is dead. It did. It died already. Um, you know, right now, they are making money from these new, from the new generation, basically. Uh, but... They're not making the money they made during the first Force Awakens because that was the real fan base that was like, we need Star Wars. 
and you gave them Force Awakens and you gave them hope. And then and then everything went down to shitter soon after that because you, you 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 fucked up. George Lucas left you three scripts and you said, nah, we're going to do our own thing. You idiots. Ah, anyways, it's Disney. They own so many properties and so many companies that even if they lose money, they still make money. They're not going anywhere. It's like WWE, you know, WCW beat them for years and they, they lost a lot of money, but they still kept going. And AEW could probably go for a long time because Tony Khan has a hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, and his dad's a billionaire. They have more money than, than the McMahon. So they can go on for 10, 15, 20 years maybe. But so can WE. So WE is never ending. And Disney's never ending. At this point, uh, with as much assets and collateral that they have, they're just, you know, it's just a machine swallowing up shit to trash. It's basically what they are nowadays. They're swallowing up our fucking hopes and dreams and our childhoods only to shit all over them. That's what they are. And that's what they're there for. Uh... Cheers, Timmons. The shit. The cunt. On the, on the podcast video, he says, That gold Ghostbuster plot, how you explained it, sounds more like Doctor Strange plot to me. LOL. Yeah, I mean, I, I still, from the beginning, I used to tell what the, he who should not be named, if you remember. On the other channel, on this channel, but you know, before the revamp, I used to tell this whole Frozen Empire, Winter is Coming shit is not like attractive to me for a Ghostbusters movie. Like, why Winter? It made no sense, but whatever. It was really, um, how I wouldn't want to say because it was a pretty long movie to me. Um, it was. It was really contained as far as location wise because I want to say about 70 to 80 percent of the movie is in the firehouse now that I think about it um so yeah it's just a movie I guess just it's a cash grab it's a it's a Ghostbusters cash grab all right that's what it is it's a big deal you know they exist let's make some money like Betelgeuse the cash grab all right this is all I try to do. Make some money. Cheers to cut. Motherfucking uh, bra. Ah. Eighty three weeks is how long Bischoff beat Vince. Yeah, yeah. He never shuts the fuck up about it neither, huh? That son of a bitch. You know, Eric Bischoff's an idiot because he could have literally been a part of AEW. Like, had a job there. Executive producer or some ass. And instead, he went on his podcast and started trashing Tony Khan. You know what's sad about it is that little boy. That little boy. I think I think little, he's younger than me. I think he is. I think he is. But that little boy is fucking... Um, he's, he's very easy to pick on. Because he's probably autistic or something. Or very antisocial or... I don't know if you've seen him. He's kind of weird, man. He's kind of weird. Like, you know, like, you know, he's one of these geeks, one of these freaks. Maybe he didn't know exactly how to talk to people and shit. And, and some of the wrestlers have said, like, he's kind of like the rain man of wrestling because you're talking to him and all of a sudden he'll be saying, hey, like, you had this match, like, on June something and you were fighting this guy and it was badass. Do you remember that? And the wrestler will be like, no. <laughs> so that's... Tony Khan's probably like he's one of these kids, you know, like so it's very easy to pick on someone like that and for fucking uh, uh, Someone as professional as Eric Bischoff to go on his fucking podcast and start talking shit about a little boy I thought that was ass and a lot of people do it too and it's like uh, I understand wrestling fans doing it because we don't give a fuck But motherfucking professionals like that talking shit about Tony Khan is like ass because it's like he's just a little boy compared to most of you motherfuckers He's a little boy with money but he's still a little boy. And he's a weird little boy. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. He like uh you know, he's one of these autistic little nerds or whatever. Uh nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Elon Musk is one of the richest mans on earth. I think he's the richest man alive, and he's autistic as fuck. He looks like fucking he was put together in a lab in a test tube or something. 
His head is weird. He's probably an alien. Anyways, chairs the cunt. His fantasy booking does suck. Uh, he does need to he because man they got they got great wrestlers and great talent. They just need better uh, uh, and they just hired a bunch of people, man. So I think pe things will change, but they just need better writers, man. I I want to say this past Wednesday to me was probably the best one I've seen simply because there was no twenty minute talking segments. There wasn't any segments that resembled we. It just flowed, this Wednesday flowed perfectly. You know, uh, there could have been more. I, I'm always, there should be more girl matches. Always. I want to see tits and ass. At least two matches a show of women. There should always be at least two matches of women in every show. But one is all they get. We're lucky if it's 15 minutes, but whatever. He is a mark. He is, I, uh, MJF was right when he called him a fucking mark on live television. He is a fucking mark. Uh, he's, a, he's a kid. He's a kid. He's a fan. He's a wrestling fan. He's one of us, basically. But with money. You know what I'm saying? He's a man. Just a man. Had a fucking, uh, 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 a, a fucking wrestling promotion. Because I, all of a sudden, I win the billion dollars on the jackpot. Or call it the underground wrestling broadcast. Because <laughs> they gotta say broadcast on it. <laughs> Underground Wrestling Federation or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll be, we'll come out as the woke pack and we'll be the authority. All of us. <laughs> Fucking screwing over all the wrestlers and shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's supposed to be out for a while. He's injured, that guy, man. He was fighting injured. I give it up to any of these wrestlers who would be fight, fighting injured, man, because that's, that's tough. I think the one injury out of me, and that's it, I would have quit. I retired. I'm out. But but you just sprayed your ankle. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. Keep going with the comments. There's a lot of comments I keep forgetting. Uh, Travis Day, 1977. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> That's a good year. That's a good year. On the X-Men 97 sucks. Who is this 80s hair metal dude? This is awesome. Did the son of man bitch. Oh, yeah. And remember, we're... Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Travis Day. Um, I went to the, the analytics... Because YouTube provides analytics and shit. And I went to them. <laughs> the majority of motherfuckers that watch us are fucking between the ages of 35, 35 and up. <laughs> With the exception of the cunt and probably a, a few other motherfuckers. But most, most motherfuckers are old here. <laughs> That's badass, you know. Uh... Yeah, yeah, we're just a bunch of old farts here just complaining. A bunch of fucking uh, George Carlins. <laughs> the cunt, you're an old soul. That's why you're here, cunt. You're just like us. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love George Carlin. I miss George Carlin. Oh, man, his comedy was great. Him and Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks was the comic that never made it. And he was really good and smart as fuck. He could have changed the world with his comedy. I'll just put it like that. Uh, may you rest in peace. Oh, both of them. George Carlin, too. Uh, oh, Rocco, fuck my life on the X-Men sucks. Let me hit it for Rocco. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco! Um, Rocco says... X-Men X -Men 97 blew ass. Son cut all, caught the entire show. And you tore this arse a new one, bros. They should have never touched it. Rumor is they want to revamp Spider-Man 94 too. Shit monkey balls. Disney will never learn. Cheers to the man. Hashtag. Um... I heard that too. 
that because they're getting great reviews and they're getting a lot of views on this. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't subscribe, so, you know, I, I get everything off my VPN. Uh, Jack Sparrow Bay. Um, but because it's being popular, obviously, uh, they are debating on, on thinking about putting Spider-Man 94, bringing it back, or having a crossover, you know, between two shows. But I got a feeling that, well, I don't know, because I, I mean, at first I thought that this might tie in to Deadpool 3 at the end, because it's all going to be about multiverses and shit. And I thought maybe the Wolverine here is actually the one we're seeing in Deadpool. <laughs> you know, I thought that maybe that's how they, when they come into the live action universe, he changes and he looks like fucking Hugh Jackman. And that's why he has the yellow suit and shit. Uh, but I don't know what they're doing, man. Uh, we'll talk more about X-Men 97 tonight when we review it. I'm going to get too much into it. Cheers, Rocco. Thank you for commenting, you fucking Satanist. Oh my god, this fucking women molester. No, ma'am. Let me hit it for this fucking guy. I don't know if I should, though. God damn it. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. My god, this guy's bad. Anyways, on the X-Men 97 video, he says, X-Men blew so hard. LOL. I couldn't stop laughing at how ridiculous and downgraded it was. It was downgraded. I still still think it's downgraded just because of the animation style. Um, I don't understand why you can't work as hard as people did back then and actually draw frame by frame. But it's whatever. Take your shortcuts. It's the way people are nowadays. Uh, these ben He said continues and he says, These Ben 10 kids who are praising it are lame as fuck. Hashtag. Live. <laughs> ben 10 hey you know what I ain't gonna lie uh, there's a friend of mine who had a son uh, and whenever I went over there uh, to hang out and shit I'd end up hanging out with her son more than her you know I, I introduced him to Dragon Ball I introduced him to Star Wars and, sh and shit um, but he introduced me to Ben 10 and Ben 10 was kind of cool man especially cause I feel like that cartoon didn't he grow up in the cartoon like you saw him change and even the cartoon got more mature as he grew up uh but it was kind of weird because there's aliens and, and shit like that like for little kids to be watching <laughs> uh alien invasions and shit like that it's cool it's kind of like back in the day when they had bucky o'hare bucky o'hare was way too smart for kids uh, and that's why it failed but bucky o'hare was Fucking badass, man. Bucky O'Hare was like fucking Guardians of the Galaxy or some shit like that. It was it was fucking badass. I remember that. And it was really smart because the Toad world, they were ruled by this supercomputer that was like this brain that was like a Toad brain or lizard brain. And it would have everyone uh, uh, fucking brainwashed in the planet, all the other frogs. From watching television and eating and buying products and I'm like dude that's like nah and this was back in the 80s and I'm like that's like what it is right now bro um it was fucking nuts and uh and it sucks that smart series smart series like that they don't they don't make it because they're so ahead of their time um but yeah I uh I think Ben can Ben 10 was 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 okay you know I like the Fairly Odd Parents was funny as fuck. Some of those jokes, like, I don't even know. Like, why would they? Like, kids wouldn't grasp a joke like this. Like, this is made for adults. Sometimes I, I think like that. But, yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on. Anthony Timmons on the Sun is Done with Richard Simmons video. Short video. He says, uh, that dude was always supposed to be some kind of fitness expert. Ex expert. But to me, he always looked like a lump of cottage cheese. Not, never got it. I felt the same way. Although my analogy was not cottage cheese. I just thought he looked like one of my aunts or something. Or some uh, one of my grandma's friends or something. I don't know. I was just like, I was wondering why it was he did fitness videos when he didn't look in shape at all. You know? I mean, we had Suzanne Summers, for God's sakes, making these types of videos, and she was hot as fuck. 
You know, I believe her dancing around getting in shape. I don't know about this asshole. I'll just put it like that. So I kind of agree and actually had the same fucking um, frame of mind as you did, Anthony Timmons, when I was younger. Regarding Richard Simmons. But, you know, whatever. Um, cheers, Timmons. Oh, on the Pony versus Here video, it's J Hart W. Oh, he j he just quotes me. So let me just say it the way I said it. I'm not cheering. I'm drinking to forget this ass. <laughs> Cheers, Jay. I didn't realize how many fucking comments there are, motherfuckers. Uh, we've already. I think we've been here th more than 30 minutes. God damn it. <laughs> I'm kind of happy that nobody watches this show because if we had over a million subscribers, I would never finish with the comments. There really, And there'd be a lot of haters talking shit about, you know, Melanie Mack going on here, calling me a faggot. There'd be a bunch of motherfuckers talking shit, you know. So I'm kind of glad nobody watches this. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with the, 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 the little comments I get. Uh, let's see. Let me open this. Uh, it's somebody called me ear. Me ear. Mate. Mate R. I don't know. Mater. It could be a lot of stuff. I don't know. But he looks like, I don't know, I can't even see his avatar. He looks like he could be a, some fucking long-haired fucking anime shit. I don't know what this is. Anyways, on the X-Men shit, let me just read what he said, because I don't know how to describe this asshole. Bishop doesn't need to have a disposition or talk when he first episode was literally a disposition cream pie of information to connect with the original story, but his story is very well fleshed out in the original series, and since this is a direct sequel, it's valid. No, it's not, because even this statement where you gave your explanation still doesn't answer the actual question I asked. Why is Bishop there? Why? Now, they did. I don't, again, because then uh, I'm going to come back to this when I review this episode. Because something happened in this episode that I'm just like, ah, that, there's the reason and shit. But they still don't give us a clear reason how he even ended up there. Why he's even part of the team. Why he came back. What happened. Because the last time I remember, Rogue sent him back to the future and he stayed there. But uh, we'll get into it later. No, you're still wrong. And I'll tell you why you're wrong later on tonight. Cheers. Whatever your name is, because it could be like three different ways to say it. Cheers. Well, oh, I'm out. Let me grab another beer. I'm still going to cheers to you, motherfucker. Matt Ear or some shit. Cheers to you. Ah, oh, I love it when it's cold like that. It's like drinking it's like drinking water fresh from the Arctic. Water that fucks you up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Leon Woodley on the X-Men 97 sucks says Oh please. Oh please what motherfucker? You be more specific. What do you want? Uh he did comment again. And he says, uh, two excellent episodes. I'm glad it's going well. Well, that's your opinion, and I guess it's valid uh, in your world. And he commented again, I think. Yeah. But the same comment, two excellent episodes. Let me make sure that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they weren't. The first two episodes sucked. I'll put it like that. I would have done a lot better, you know. But anyways, we're going to continue, Woodley. Woodley. And I bet you that is his real name. That sucks having a name like that, bro. It sucks when your last name sucks. Like if your last name is Cummings. I mean, come on. How are you not going to be made fun of growing up as a kid? God damn it. Especially if you're a female. You're fucked. Uh, but... When your parents purposely name you the first name to be something fucked, that's just bullshit, man. That's when you know your parents are assholes. There's a lot of kids I knew growing up that I was just like, damn, dude, your fucking parents suck ass. There's one kid, man. Uh, 
His his name was Guadalupe. That's like the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Guadalupe. It's over there in a Mexican shit. That's usually a fucking a girl's name. They named him that, the first name. That's the worst thing you can do to a male with a penis that, that produces sperm and is not gay. Holy shit, bro. That kid went, went on to become a hitman for the cartels. And right now he's in jail here in, in the United States. I blame his mother for naming him that. So yeah, think very hard. It sucks when you have a last name like Woodley. There's nothing you can do about it, Woodley. <laughs> but your first name, you know, your parents better don't be an asshole to your kids. You name them something cool, you know, something manly. Dicks. Anyways, Peter Griffin commented. The Peter Griffin, he commented on Godzilla Minus One. The director sets up, got set up at the Oscars. Just, at least let the man finish reading his speech before the music send off. God damn it. I'm with you, man. They, But they do that to everybody when they start taking too damn long. It was just getting embarrassing because this motherfucker cannot speak English. So they said, oh, play the music already. Get him off the stage. He's embarrassing himself and shit. People are trying hard not to laugh. I'm just mad that someone let him go up there in the first place without a fucking learning or having a translator. That's some bullshit. Somebody sends me to a German shit and I win a award. I'm going to have a German bitch. You say everything I say, you whore. But say it in English or in whatever language they're speaking so they understand. But I'm not going to go in there and try to embarrass myself, try to speak another language I don't know. God damn it. You know, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Mexican Joker from South Park. <laughs> I am the Mexican Joker from South Park. Ah! <laughs> Cheers, Peter Griffin. Thank you for commenting, you fucking guy. Uh, Let's see who else is here. Oh shit, on the X-Men 97. Uh, Dimar, I think. Dima, because I think I went on there. But he says, uh, I was wondering the same thing. Nobody seems to care when I googled it. They should have put a large case of cash on Larry Houston, the original director's desk, and let him run the show until he could find a proper replacement. The voice acting from Wolverine and World was not good. I, I agree. And if they just recorded some lines from home with no proper direction. I also didn't like the way they drew Magneto. What's up with the cutoff sleeves? Like, oh, I've been working out. I gotta, And I'm fucking 80 years old. So let me show off that I'm badass and shit. I don't, I, yeah. You know, smart people understand why we're upset. Smart people that actually love the show understand what we're... There's a bunch of idiots that are brainwashed and... Oh, yeah, 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 you fucking dumbasses. You fucking lick ass is what you fucking do. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this tonight. Just wait till we get to that part. Uh, by the way, the Godzilla uh, Kong uh, spoilers with... And I'm sure... Uh, hopefully I don't get banned. But I'm showing you all the kaiju battles. Uh, tonight. And uh, that's at the very end. After the Marvel ass. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dima R. For commenting. Cheers. I agree with everything you said, bro. You're a smart man. You're a smart man. Or woman. Or a non-binary. Whatever you identify. You're smart as fuck. Anyways. DJ New Kid on The Sun is Done with Richard Simmons video. He just puts a bunch of faces laughing. Cheers, DJ New Kid. <laughs> the DJ horn was for you, motherfucker. Uh, Brenda Griffith on the X Men 97 actually sucks. When the teacher calls on me unexpectedly. Um,. I'm going to click on it and see see what this is because I really don't know. I'll play for a few seconds and then we'll see. So let's just, just imagine the teacher called on her unexpectedly. Back his ass back. We, you did what you did. Get out of here before you don't want to. You're not going to kill Gambit. You dick. And she sent him back. And that's all. 
We we fucking knew. Why is he back? Is he here to save another time parallel? Is something bad happening in the future? Why is he still in the past? They don't explain nothing. He's just there. And even worse, he's just in the background as a side character. Doesn't contribute or do anything unless fighting is happening. Oh, fighting is happening. Here comes the black guy with his gun. All right, here comes the black guy with his guns. Oh my god. <laughs> Brenda Griffith, cheers! <laughs> I hope that's what you wanted us to play. Cheers! Oh, oh I'm gonna get drunk tonight, you motherfuckers. I still gotta work tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Trevor Bertrand says X-Men 97 was lit. Yeah. It was lit like a like a brown fucking paper bag full of dog shit that you'd light in front of your neighbor's front door and then ring the doorbell and run away. That's how lit it was. <laughs> you know what? It wasn't even dog shit. It was actual human feces in a bag, in a brown fucking paper bag lit on fire. <laughs> That's what the X-Men 97 was. Cheers, Trevor! <laughs> Indie Phantom, ah, oh, this Canuck on the X Men ninety seven sucks. He says, "What's up with Diddy?" We're gonna talk about that tonight. They're coming for my boy. Well, I don't know, but those mansions were like some Tony Montana Scarface shit. The videos I know are mostly from his Puff Daddy faces, and they were pretty mild for most of the part. Uh, one of the hottest things ever was J Lo in Been Around the World. Damn, son, she was fine. Cheers. Cheers, Indie Phantom. Hey, you know what's sad about J-Lo is that her album and her movie released with the album flopped. And it's not selling. And not only that, but she had a tour, you know, and they were not selling out. And so now she's canceling the tour because she doesn't want to perform to fucking empty seats, empty arenas. And I'm just like, that's kind of strange that, I mean, look, I'm not a J-Lo fan. I don't like her at all. But I thought at least with her name alone is enough to sell out an arena, to be honest with you. It's kind of strange to me that she's not selling out an arena as popular as she should be. I mean, she's pretty hot. I mean, that's all she's got going for her. And for at least that, you can go watch her, but. I guess people are starting to see past the fucking, the veil, you know? If you want to be an industry plant, you actually have to have talent like Billy Idol or Taylor Swift in order for people to like you, you know? You can't just be a plant nowadays and be like untalented and beautiful. That ain't going to fly. There's OnlyFans for that kind of shit. You're going to be beautiful and untalented. You go to OnlyFans, motherfucker. You get a lot of money. That's all I'm going to say. A lot of motherfucking money. Uh, but you don't fuck around trying to be a singer and shit. If you ain't got the whole package nowadays. Because people people know. Anyways. Cherries in the Phantom. Mike Thompson. On the Godzilla Minus One, got, the director got set up at the Oscars because they embarrassed him. He said, that's some rude shit. It is. It is. It was rude for them to do this to this man. His legacy. He was put to shame in another country. Embarrassed. Fuck you. That would have never happened to me. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, cheers, Mike. You sons of bitches. I'm drinking a lot now. This is actually, I think this is my fourth beer because there's another can somewhere back there. <laughs> uh, Anthony Timmons on the Chow May becomes the Bob Dylan short video. Dude could write okay, but he couldn't carry a tune in a gallon bucket to save his life. He couldn't carry, he cannot do nothing. Fuck that guy. All right. I don't, I don't understand the. The awe or, or the aura or all this, uh, some kind of attraction to to anything that is Bob Dylan. 
Even his name is lame. He can't sing. His music sucks ass. He's a fucking, he's just one of these guys who sold his soul to the devil. Just like Ozzy Osbourne, who sounds like ass. He does. He sounds like he's whining. A high-pitched whine. That wasn't even metal. It wasn't even good. Like fucking Dave Mustaine or, you know, it wasn't even like Iron Maiden. It wasn't even good singing. It was whiny, fucking shitty, druggy singing. And then we have Mick Jagger, who sounds like ass. And looks like ass, too. And somehow, these guys are like some of the richest people in the world and will live on forever, even after they're dead. They sold their souls. Untalented motherfuckers like that sold their souls. Cares. Timmons. Yeah, Springsteen. Yeah, the boss. Fuck you. How is that even cool? How is calling yourself the boss cool, man? Leave that for a woman to be saying. A woman saying I'm the boss is fucking pimp. For a guy to say it sounds lame as shit. Fuck you. Wearing your fucking cut off sleeves and shit. You look, you look like somebody's 40 year old dad up there and shit. And that was back then when you were fucking famous. <laughs> you dumbass. Fuck that guy, dude. They had to sell their souls, dude. They got no talent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, they got no talent, you know. But oh well. Tom Petty. <laughs> you like Tom Petty. I, I'm, I mean, I'd have no problem with Tom Petty, but I'm just like, it's, uh, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it, you know. I do appreciate good singers, bro. Like, I'm saying, that guy from fucking, I think it's Toto, right? The one that, hold the line, love isn't always on time. That guy's fucking amazing, and he looks like some lame, he looks like fucking Bob Dylan. <laughs> He looks lame as fuck, but this guy has amazing fucking voice. That's talent right there. You can't fucking take that away from nobody. That's why Freddie Mercury with those big buck teeth. But he got talent. Alright, there's a difference. This dumbass don't got no talent. Fuck you, Bob Dylan. We're moving on. <laughs> we got more comments to read. Oh, shit, you all. Oh, it's none other. Then the trumpets will sound. Let me hit it for this orange-haired racist rapist. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. I want to build the wall. We need the wall. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Cheers, trumpets. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know how we do in this channel, and I have... Uh, I have the help of AI to read this comment for us since I don't have uh, he who should not be named to do the voice. AI does it way better than that piece of shit ever would. So here we go. The trumpets. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. What's up, muchacho? Sorry, I've been absent. I took a big L for America this week. Very unfortunate. By the way, does anybody have $355 million I could borrow? Anyone? Gomer Kyle? I'm looking at you, bud. Anyhow, boy, oh boy, X-Men 97 blow ours so hard, didn't it? Wolverine has been uh, reduced to morphs. Sex toy now. What a damn shame. Cheers to the son of man. And as always, hashtag woke pack for life. Hashtag. It's so trippy hearing him say that. I will say, um, sometimes I feel it's really fast, but then when you hear him speak, he kind of is kind of like almost tripping, like if he's tripping on himself. It's just weird. I don't know how, how they do this. I don't know how they do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gomer, uh, do you have $355 million he could borrow? <laughs> they're making them pay all this like he only has like i think he's only has like 500 million dollars or some shit like that and they're trying to take all his money so he doesn't have enough to run for president <laughs> fucking dicks <laughs> just like anything it's it's crazy because like you're literally seeing corruption in front of your eyes and everyone's just like whatever i mean but that's the way it's always been and we saw it in the bush administration we saw it in the obama administration we saw it in all the administrations uh the only administration that was ever good to us was ronald reagan's let's not lie anyways 
Uh, cheers! The trumpets! All right, let's move on. Anthony Timmons on the Heat sequel is in the works. They're currently bankrupt. The well is running dry, and they have nothing new to offer us. They wonder why we don't go to the movies anymore. We can get higher quality entertainment on YouTube. You're not lying about you when you fucking say that. Uh, a lot of amateurs fucking are amazing nowadays on YouTube. I saw this fan-made uh, movie, short movie, like about Darth Vader and the Emperor, and the Emperor tricks him that Padme is still alive and all this ass. It's fucking nuts, bro. And it was really, really good quality. Even the actors, the makeup even looked really close to them, and the actors, the voices were almost fucking identical. And I was just like... Lucas Disney is fucking up. That's all I said when I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cheers, Timmons. Damn, oh, man, there's a lot of comments. I can tell you right now because I already need to go pee. But we're not done, so I'm going to keep going. I can hold it in, motherfuckers. I can hold it in for three hours if I have to. I'm not going to, but I can. All right, anyways. I'm not going to explain to you when I actually had to hold it for three hours, but I did one time and it sucked ass. Uh, cheers. Uh, Timmons and uh, next one is Lewis Jones also on the heat not gonna happen they're too damn old and he has also puts another comment Al looks like he's getting ready to buy a farm any minute now Al Pacino looks like fucking he's gonna die next week you know especially now that he has a newborn Pakistani kid that, that he had with that 29 year old he came inside of and shit now he gotta pay her like uh, fucking uh, 75 grand a month and shit for the rest of her life life oh well cheers Lewis Anthony Timmons also in the punny verse says sorry I just can't picture Winnie the Pooh Winnie the fucking Pooh a serial killer it's fucked up I haven't seen the second one I'm waiting till it comes out on digital for me to see it but the first one sucks ass I fell asleep they're saying this one's better, so I don't know. They're saying some shit about there's an evil guy who kidnapped a bunch of children. And kind of like the way they did the fucking centipede or whatever that war is, whatever that movie, this guy turned him into these things, these kids. And one of the kids, one of the kids, the Winnie the Pooh is actually uh, Christopher Robin's little brother that got kidnapped a long time ago. And that's why he goes to go look for Christopher Robin. And that's Winnie the Pooh. So yeah, that's what part two finally shows you what's really going on. Chris Mieno. Or Mino. Some shit. And the son is done with Richard Simmons. What did I wander into? You wander into YouTube's wokest channel, The Underground Broadcast. <laughs> Live. Ah, oh, yeah. Cheers. You know. Super Saiyan Joe Koo on the X Men sucks. Says, I'm pretty sure everything will go downhill in a few episodes, like everything Disney does nowadays. Mother flowers. I feel the same way. We'll talk about this more when I review the next episode. He says on the Bianca Sensori exposes her mom. Joku also says, I love seeing Bianca dressing like this gorgeous. This is what I am talking about, Bianca. Cheers, my flowers. It's bathroom time. Live. Motherfucker, quit saying bathroom because I need to piss right now. <laughs> I'm rushing through the comments and shit. Joku also says, and yes, my mom can get... The mom can get it too. Classy, sexy, and wants it. Cheers! I'm totally down with that one. <laughs> the third episode is the downfall. Ah, oh, okay, we'll get to that later. Cut. Uh, let me make sure this motherfuckers of the last two comments. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, last two comments are from none other 
Then Houston, Texas, all oh, one and only Jose Treviño. Here we go. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. Tienes envidia, puto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Treviño says, What up, gay? Oh, sorry about that. He said, What up, gay? I mean, damn Nick Ho Watcher. What? Hey, don't be getting racist on this channel, you son of a bitch. I don't know what that means. Nick Ho Watcher. I don't know what that means. Anyways. Great show as usual. It's kind of strange how the media is like two to three years behind the so-called conspiracy theories. Yeah, 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 yes, you're right. <laughs> I remember the whole Nickelodeon thing before talked about in 2020. I remember seeing this documentary from a YouTuber named Mounty Buddha exposing these disgusting animals when his channel got naked, but his channel got nuked. I remember I was scared and horrified. There was... There used to be a lot of channels that talked a lot of conspiracies and they all got fucking deleted when Google bought YouTube because then they started silencing the truth. Yeah, that's why on, on Facebook, you couldn't say jack shit about Biden. But if you post something about tr no, you couldn't say jack shit about Biden, but you, it was OK to talk shit about Trump. But if you talk shit about Biden, you'll get banned for like a week or two or some ass like that. It was fucking fucked. I was like, fuck that. Uh, he says, I didn't share it because anyone felt I would I would get them targeted. Now all the evils are being brought out to light. Anyways, I got to go wash my tinfoil hat. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Uh, is it this one? This one? It's this one. Hashtag. World order. Oh, yeah. Let's hit it again because he puts it, hashtag w, uh, WWO. World order. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Trevino. And the last comment he put on x 97 is great review, son. I was wondering why Bishop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, all these fucking smart people know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, it's like there was there was two episodes, and you didn't give an explanation why he was there. You know what I'm saying? I was like, come on now, what's going on? Are they gonna say anything? And they, they never said anything. He never said anything unless we was fighting. That's the only time he talked. Let's get him! Oh yeah, what's up, fellas? Take that! The <laughs> day. He never talked through the, through the, any of the... He was just standing in the background. <laughs> that was fucking lame. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering why Bishop was in the mix and he was being all jolly. I don't remember Rogue and Magneto getting frisky. Uh, that's, uh, that's because they're assuming we read the comic books and they're just saying, oh, it happened because it happened in the comic books. Fucking dicks. That is true. They, they shouldn't have done that. Also, I don't know if I ever tried to make... Uh, a January 6th reference with Magneto's trial. Oh! <laughs> and the stupidest thing was when Gambit hopped on Wolverine like a battle cat. Maybe that's symbolism of what they're doing that in bed. Dude, I'm telling you, bro. If they make Wolverine gay with Morph. We're talking about this later on tonight. But oh my god. Um... Cheers, Jose Trevino. I am with you all the way with everything you said. Um, there's, uh, I don't know, I like to believe there's some of us that feel this way. Because there's a bunch of dumbasses that are just like, This is awesome! Fucking idiots! Anyways. But all I'm going to say is, uh, Cheers, Jose Trevino, and thank you for commenting, motherfucker. My social medias. In Twitter, it's not X, not until it says www.x.com. It's Twitter. Elon Musk. Uh, it's at Sonoman665. It's fucking Instagram. It's at 
the underscored underground underscored broadcast because somebody else already had fucking some shit. And then uh, at TikTok, it's at the, the underground broadcast. Anything you send me, I'll post it here in the comments before we start. Cheers to y'all. Thank you very much for fucking uh, being badasses and for commenting. You commented a lot this week. We I think I read comments for a fucking hour, you assholes. I'm pretty much drunk already. Cheers. Thank you for that. All right, let me just grab another beer here. We can get this show on the road. Cheers. Happy Friday. All right, let's get this show on the road. And as always, we will start with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And let's get right into the nitty gritty ditty. Puff Daddy's home was fucking raided this week. Homes, I might add. And last, some of the people in the comments said earlier, <laughs> this these homes look like some fucking Tony Montana shit. Uh, a lot of people got arrested. People that were there having orgies people that were there doing drugs the handler who was personally hired by puff daddy to get him cocaine weed ecstasy pills fucking roofies ketamine anything imaginable ecstasy mdma acid shrooms yeah 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 let's get some fucking sidenafil i need some fucking erection pills up in this bitch Everybody's gonna take one in their drink. We're getting fucked tonight. And he meant it. He got fucked that night. Uh, but yes, people got arrested. They did. They did. They found people there, and they motherfuckers. They found sex toys and dolls and teddy bears and a bunch of fucking shit. And Puff Daddy was seen somewhere in the harbor, far away from his home, pacing back and forth. Nervously pacing. That right there is a man who is, uh, I want to say, uh, uh, fucking, oh, reconciling and thinking about everything he's ever done, wondering where it all went wrong. I tell you where it went wrong with a finger in the ass. That's where it started going wrong. Dumbass. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, man, I don't know what it's like to have that much money. Do people really get bored that quickly when you have that much money that they have to fucking start being this type of person? That's crazy. Well, Mr. Diddy didn't just take it pacing up and down the street he needed to find some way to escape and he came up with a plan you all he said fuck it i'm going to the caribbeans can nobody hold me down can nobody take my pride uh i got to keep on moving oh the son of a bitch took his black jet Full of black servants wearing all black. Uh, he probably had orgies in there too. And then he came out all fucking happy. And he said, fuck it. I'm going to live it up. Because I'm going to jail in a few months. <laughs> Cheers, Puff Daddy, you dumb son of a bitch. This is what happens when you don't tip the hookers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh no no I know there's a lot of shit going on about victims and about you know Puff Daddy and whether he's innocent or guilty of all these accusings of molestations drugging underage women and raping them having fucking orgies 
while drugging everybody, spiking their drinks without anybody's uh, acknowledgement, apparently, because they were putting ecstasy pills in the vodka bottles and everybody was drinking, getting horny all of a sudden. Why am I so horny? I don't let me take my clothes off and shit. Uh, so all of these things that he was doing, including fingering the ass of the assistants and people that were hired there to help and all this shit, uh, masturbating, taking a shower in front of them and Cubic Gooding Jr. grabbing some balls, sacks and shit and any chance he could because he's rich and famous and shit. All this shit was going on. Allegedly. But. The real victim here, believe it or not, is not the, the supposed victims and not the women, the underage and all the motherfucking drugs and not even Puff Daddy, if this is a lie. I don't know. The real victim here is the neighbors because they have to put up with the house being raided and all this commotion and all this ass. And I got to tell you, none other than poor Mr. 86 years old, too fucking old to even be alive right now Ridley Scott couldn't even get into his own home he went to go see his doctor because his heart his, his chest was hurting and turned out he had high blood pressure and they made him fucking you know sit there and shit and do all these IV fluids and all this ass and then he went home and he couldn't even get inside his home because Puff Daddy's being debaucherous having orgies and shit drugging women raping them look at this fucking poor old man being all fat, can't even get into his own home. I feel for you, Ridley Scott. Cheers! But it doesn't end here. The debaucherousness and the nonsense. Because Rodney Jones has gone on trial and started calling out names. I mean, we already talked about how he called out Cuba Gooden Jr. and shit. Oh, he put his finger in his ass and... And my ass, and he grabbed my, my ball sacks and shit. When I was walking by, he, he said, go bring me some, some fucking toast, bitch. And grab some ass when, when I turned around. Cuba, Cuba, Cuba did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Daddy was trying to groom him. Here, here's some gay porn. Sit here and watch it with me. He was telling him. It was fucked up. He said, there was some fucked up shit going on. Uh, He was trying to groom him and shit. Uh, But... Now it's coming out that Rodney Jones is coming out and saying that none other than Daphne Joy, this is 50 Cent's latest baby mama. He just got her pregnant, has a kid and shit, uh, you know, maybe like a year or two ago, maybe three. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, she's an OnlyFans model, by the way, just so you know. And it now turns out that Rodney Jones is saying this is one of the three women that Puff Daddy had on a monthly fucking salary. He would pay them per month money. And whenever he wanted, he would call them and they'd have to come over and have sex. Orgies, gangbangs, whatever the fuck he wanted. But but they were guaranteed this money at the end of every month. And that she was one of them. So 50 Cent posted himself in front of his fucking uh, fucking Cadillac Escalade on fucking rims and Tims and all this ass that he spent. And it's raining and he's smoking a big stogie and shit. And, and he puts on Instagram, you moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me. But I was busy fucking other white bitches with bigger asses. You bitch. So you moved back, and then you started receiving money from Brother Love over here. <laughs> now here we are, a little sex worker. <laughs> uh, right now, this chick is actually in the middle of a custody battle with 50 Cent over their kid. I think this bitch is about to lose custody of this kid. <laughs> 50 Cent is about to raise a child for the first time in his life by himself. Cheers. This is, a, this is this is a loose situation for everybody, no matter how it goes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Fifty don't give a fuck. Fifty just post whatever the fuck. Yeah, she sucked my dick last night. He'll post it and shit. I like Fifty. Me and Fifty would probably get along real good because we think alike and shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's an, she's an OnlyFans model. You know what OnlyFans is? It's porn. She, she's not a model. She's a whore. She's a whore 
who fucking uh, pornographers her body on online for money. When you do anything with your body in the nude for money, it's called being a whore. <laughs> All right. Plain and simple. That's what she is. 50 knew it when he fucked her and got her pregnant. And Puff Daddy knew it when he paid her per month to come over and get fucked by whoever the fuck P, P. Diddy wanted to see her get fucked by. Whether it was him or his friends or maybe just whatever. Just bring her over. I'm paying you per month, bitch. Her and three other women, apparently. Wow. This is getting out of hand, fellas. This is getting really, really out of hand. And I don't think P. Diddy is going to see a way out of this. He's going to jail no matter what. This is worse than Jonathan Majors. This is like fucked. And they raided all his how homes and shit. I'm telling you, bro. This guy is fucked. He is going to jail. Hey, he'll probably. I wonder how long he's going to get. 30 years? Maybe. Maybe 30 years? Yeah. Yeah. yeah look at him pacing. He's probably saying, man, I should have never let that pastor finger me in the ass. That's when it all changed. When he did that. <laughs> Cheers, P. Diddy, you dumb son of a bitch. I hope you go to jail, you asshole. Cheers! Let's move on because we're not done with celebrity ass. Because now, there's everybody who has a manoir in a book. And now, Rebel Wilson is releasing a book in her first fucking chapter. She's trashing Bull Rat, Sasha Baron Cohen. And she's coming out and saying, that this guy's an ass. It was an ass to me the whole time while I was on the set of that Brothers Gimsy movie. That, that fucking stupid ass movie that nobody watched. Oh, I hate that fucking movie. I'm not even lying. Uh, I hate it with a passion. I already hate British movies because I don't even understand what the fuck they're saying half the time with their goddamn fucking accents and shit. And then I gotta watch some ass like this. That really pisses me off. Uh, but anyways. She's saying that. Like. The fucking. There was like. A scene. Or, or, or a scene. That Sasha wanted to film. And in the scene. He was going to pull down his pants. And tell her stick my. Stick your finger in my ass. And Sasha said. Do it for real. You know. Because it's comedy. And then she was all like, what? I'm not going to stick my finger in your ass and shit. And she complained and she complained. And then they fucking changed the whole scene. Because she was complaining. She didn't want to do it. I don't know if that's real or true. But that sounds really fucking crazy. I mean, at first I thought maybe they were trying to punk her. And they're just like fucking... Uh, like fucking lying and shit, but she says that they also made her. They also made her do sex scenes, and they told her she had to get completely naked. And she's like, "I'm not getting naked. Like, put some pasties on me and shit. Like, this asshole wants to be naked with me. Fuck, fuck this guy. I don't know if this is true, but this does sound pretty fucked up. You know what I'm saying? If Borat was trying to do this, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I thought Rebel Wilson was gay. Wasn't is she gay? Maybe she is she gay? I thought she was gay or some shit. You know? I don't know. She's skinny now. I liked her better like this when she was nice and full. I'm gonna be honest with you. She better like this. She got bigger thick bigger thighs, bigger titties, you know, bigger ass. That's where it's all about. Ass Cheers. A uh, Borat. I don't know what's going on, but he was trying to sue her and shit, but I don't know he can. If it's the truth, you cannot sue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Cheers to whatever the ass this is. Who's ever ass this is? Sorry about that. But since we're talking about asses, guess what? Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor have been promoting their Roadhouse movie, which I still haven't seen. 
I hope to see it here in the next couple of days. I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be honest with you. I already downloaded it with my VPN, Winscribe VPN, coming at you live at Jack Sparrow Bay. I already downloaded it, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I will see it soon. But they've been promoting it, and this was for like Sports Illustrated, some ass. And Conor McGregor was fucked. I'll talk more about this after we watch the video. But I'm going to show you some snippets. I can't show you the whole fucking video because then we're going to get banned and shit. But I'll show you some fucking snippets real quick. Here we go. The very beginning that the that the fight fans always felt like they were watching something original, something fun. And so he was always coaching me and showing me how to do do things or change something up. To make Jake's a consummate professional. 75 movies made. You know, I would, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. It's a part of the whole thing, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, also it's important to, to know what it feels like. And the spar I did that particularly, he was always very... He was good to me, and I sometimes had to remind him. <laughs> I, la I landed one punch. <laughs> Once. And, and he hit me with a door. <laughs> Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. That's yeah, true. An amazing stunt, a stunt team, Garrett Warden. Look, either fucking Connor is lit up as fuck, he's on coke, or he's on crack, or meth. Like, what the fuck is going on there, bro? He's twitching and shit. And he, he's even doing this thing with his tongue. <laughs> Look, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I fucking rock back and forth. I've had that all my life. Uh, Yeah, I rock. I don't know why. But anyways, yeah. I mean, that's why they don't hire me at jobs. They think, look at this guy's on drugs. He's like just shaking and shit. <laughs> I do get judged by how I look. Anyways. Uh, yeah. He's fucking high out of his mind. He was probably drunk as fuck. And he said, I can't do this interview. And Jake's all like, no, it's okay. You can do it. Just fucking do some coke. And he's like, that's a good idea, Mike. And then he just goes... <laughs> And he did like a fucking three thick ass lines. And then he's all like, I could do the interview. <laughs> I'm going to play it again. I'll try to take the volume off. Hopefully, hopefully I could take the volume off uh, and shit just so I could play it in the background. Uh, but here I go. The very beginning that the, that the fight fans go. always felt. Look at how fucked he looks, bro. <laughs> He's twitching, bro. He's blinking too much. No one blinks that much, bro. No one. It's like every two, every word he's speaking, he's blinking. <laughs> Look at his tongue. Look at his tongue. I was thinking, what if he's on X? What if he's on MDMA and shit? This could be MDMA too. This could be a Molly. He could be on it too. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jake Gyllenhaal, I, I, I zoomed in to, to his face, but Jake Gyllenhaal is laughing the whole time. And I'm thinking Jake Gyllenhaal knows this guy's fucked up. He says, you really fucked up. We about to do this interview, man. You're crazy. All right, let's go. Fuck it. <laughs> Look at this son of a bitch, dude. That's fucking some nuts. That's some crazy ass shit, bro. I'm just going to say. Uh, Connor doesn't give a fuck. About nothing. <laughs> uh, cheers to this asshole. And I, I don't, I haven't seen the Roadhouse. I, I think I saw Indie Phantoms review. I think he says it sucks ass. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, I think he did a review. I'm fucking up. I'm looking at Twitters and shit. Uh, but I gotta check this out. I gotta check it out. Uh, I already have it, so I gotta check it out. Uh, cheers to these assholes. We'll see how this turns out. Uh, meanwhile, somewhere out there in the interweb, a little a little Christian girl said faggot. Let us watch. Faggots. Uh, 
This little girl doesn't give a fuck. She continues every day to say the fucking faggot word. And she's a Christian. A hardcore Christian who believes in Christ. And to demands you believe in Christ or is going to hell. Um. <laughs> uh, cheers to Melody Mac who doesn't give a fuck about anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, but let's get serious. Right? We're about to start talking about some serious shit. And I'm, I'm, we're going to start talking about none other than convicted rapist and molester Danny Masterson, who is serving a 30-year pris prison sentence for drugging and abusing women uh, while, under, while they uh, were under the influence and using Scientology against them. Yeah. This is about to get serious, bros. So this guy's been in jail for at least a month or so. And there's now being said that this dude is super smart. And that he's using Scientology to get his way in jail. Yeah. They're saying that already because... People know him as Hyde from that 70s show. So people want to talk to him. and They want to talk to this famous guy. They want to take a, a, a selfie with their cell, illegal cell phones or an autograph. They want to talk to him already. So already he started using his Scientology skills to manipulate people. Yeah. And that he's already made a lot of guards his friends. And a lot of guards he gets... He gets Hey, come to the front of the line for food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he goes outside, all the blacks, whites, and Mexicans like him. And shit. They all want him. They want to pick him for the team to be to play basketball and shit. And everybody passes him the ball. Yeah. And that he because he's smarter than everybody, he's able to manipulate people and talk to them about life and Dianetics and shit. And about like aliens that came here a long time ago. And fucking threw our souls into volcanoes and then exploded and went into the cavemen. And that's why we're all crazy with, with fucking dyslexia and fucking uh fucking bipolar disease and shit. He's teaching them all the ways. And they're all listening to him like a god. They're saying that it's gotten far enough, my friends. It's serious enough that he's even has a gang now. His own little clique, his posse. And they took a picture last week. Here they are. Oh, fuck. This is not working. <laughs> this is being live. Here we go. Here they are. Yeah, there he is right there. Part of the new clan. They're called La Onda. Whoa. The motherfucking Niklo right here. <laughs> Cheers to Danny Masterson surviving in jail with a gang of Scientologist gang motherfuckers. <laughs> He's in there for 30 years. He might as well start a gang. I mean, wouldn't you? I would try. I would try to start like motherfuckers if I was in there and I was famous, rich and famous. Everybody knew some of the man. I'd be in jail. For, for whatever, some bullshit they want to throw at me. Some conspiracy shit. You know, the anti-government. Fuck you. Throw me in jail. I don't give a fuck. You communist, socialist sons of bitches. Fuck you, Joe Biden. They throw me in jail and shit. So I go to jail and shit. I start a gang. It's going to be a bunch of motherfuckers with fucking braids and makeup and shit. And bandanas. It's going to be legit tattoos everywhere. We're all tatted up everywhere. Everywhere. Bitches. Yeah, yeah. Lipstick on, painted toenails and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers to Jenny Masterson surviving in jail and manipulating the shit out of everyone in jail. Enough to have all the guards and start his own gang already. Only been in there uh, like less than a month already. The jail is under his control. <laughs> This Scientologist piece of shit. <laughs> There's a rapist. <laughs> he belongs in jail, by the way. <laughs> uh, but since we are talking about rapists, let's move on. 
unfortunately, to the child molest to the child molestations. Dan Schneider, my friends. Yeah, he's back. It won't stop because people are coming out and they're saying this guy's this guy the the disgusting things he has done and insinuated backstage to that fucking what's her name Amanda Bynes and to that other little girl from Zoe 101 and shit all these kids that are defending him they all have that finger way up deep in there and they're loving it that's why they're defending him that's what they're saying they're saying these kids are fucked they're manipulated from the beginning and so they want to defend him but he's part of it too and there's a guy who used to be on the Zoe 101 show and he was also a writer because after after he got too fat they didn't want him on screen they, they still want to give him a job because he's a kid and they gave him a job there and, and he was a, a writer a helper to write for the skits for the show for kids <laughs> And he's going to tell you uh, what's going on with this asshole. Here we go. I don't know what his name is, so I just call him Bald Guy. This bald guy there in Nickelodeon that used to work there. Here we go. My name is Jack. I was a child actor on Zoe 101, one of this guy's shows. I also worked in his production department as an intern on iCarly. And I worked in the writer's room on Sam and Cat and Victorious. This Max documentary that was recently released did a really good job of uncovering the details of workplace toxicity, specifically on Dan Schneider's shows for Nickelodeon. We could talk about the massages. We could talk about the fact that he would literally count his gold coin collection in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We could talk about how sometimes he would bring out a shotgun to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. We could talk about the high level conversations I wasn't supposed to hear about how Nickelodeon didn't want to recommend antidepressants for Jeanette McCurdy after her mom died for fear that she might kill herself and make the network look bad. But what I do want to talk about is never letting this stuff happen again. Oh, my God. Look, I will say one thing. That shit about the network saying, well, we don't want to give this kid antidepressants because what if the antidepressants makes her kill herself? That's logical. You know, you don't want a kid committing suicide because some of the side effects are fucking suicidal thoughts. You ever see those commercials on TV and shit? Everything you take nowadays will give you suicidal thoughts, so why the fuck would you ever take any of that medication, you idiots? Anyways. Um, but some of the other claims are crazy. I'll defend the shit about bringing out a shotgun to scare people, because I fucking do that. I'll bring out a knife and be like, you want to die, motherfucker? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm just fucking around, you know, that's just me. Uh, so I understand that kind of shit. But the massage is giving little kids massages. Come here, little 12-year-old girl. You look tense. Let me rub your back and your belly and your thighs. That's some fucked up shit for this guy that, that fucking be doing that and shit. And all the insinuations and the cum, the cum skits and the jokes and drip slime on your face and go, ah, stick your tongue out. That's some fucked up shit. Walk, walk on eggshells. Here, let me put some dog shit on the floor. Walk on this while we record it. Oh, we're not going to use this, but I'm going to keep it. Shit like, yeah, come on, man. There's some really fucked up shit this guy did. And even though, like, like that, that's what's sad about it is a lot of these kids are defending him. Because I'm telling you, they probably still have that thumb up, on, up in that ass. I'm just saying, that's why they still defend this son of a bitch. But he's part of it. He's always been a part of it. They've always been saying since the 90s that this guy's a perv and a fucked up motherfucker. I'm telling you, Nickelodeon knows they did it on purpose. Nickelodeon was like some MK13 shit. I mean, look look at fucking uh, Britney Spears and how she's turned out and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's really fucked. Uh, anyways, fuck you, Dan Schneider. You dumb son of a bitch. One day you're going to pay for all your sins, you dick. Cheers to... uh. Well, to nobody. <laughs> I just want to drink. <laughs> Cheers to, to drinking and Friday nights. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, we're done with the weekly pop culture, pop culture breakdown. Let's get into the goddamn comic book nerd ass of the week. 
And uh, let's start off with, I don't have the intro on, I'm sorry, I'm fucking, fucking high and drunk. Uh, we'll play the intro next week. But let's get right into it, because we have a lot of shit to talk about, or a lot of ass to talk about. Scream 7 is now adding, supposedly, Courtney Cox and Patrick Dempsey, Detective Mark Candid, and uh, what was her name? Will Weathers or whatever the fuck, the reporter. Gail, Gail Weathers or some shit like that. Um, Yeah, I mean, you already got Nev Campbell. I told you, I told you they were going to get court. I just said it two weeks ago. I said, oh, next week they're going to say Courtney Cox and fucking uh, David Arquette are back in it. But they didn't want David Arquette because he's just going to be an asshole and try to be fucking Courtney Cox. So instead, they got this son of a bitch. Uh, lame. They should have got a David Arquette, but I understand why. I mean, I mean, you know, that's what he was going to be doing. He was trying to try to get into this bitch's panties and it's going to fuck up the movie and the chemistry and then ass was going to happen. It doesn't need to happen. All right? It already happened. It didn't work out. Move on, motherfucker. Go do your wrestling shit. You're still not popular in wrestling either. Anyways. So yeah. Of course they need the cash crab. Because they got rid of the girls they were setting up to be the new leads of the franchise. The two little Mexican girls. Melissa Barreda and Jenna Ortega. Now, Melissa Barreda didn't got fired. Because... She spoke out against Israel and supported Palestine on social media. Jenna Ortega supposedly said she couldn't do the movie because of scheduling conflicts. But this happened right after Melissa Barrera got fired. So us Browns likes to stick together is all I'm going to say. Uh, but Melissa Barrera's not done. Shaming this because during one of the interviews this week, because they're now announcing that this might happen, they're getting Courtney Cox and they're getting Patrick Dempsey back in this and shit. And they were interviewing Melissa Barrera and they were asking her about Scream and what does she feel about Courtney Cox and Neff Campbell. And she says, I don't have any comments about that. But what I do have comments about the whole situation is that the Jews hate brown people. She pulled a Kanye West, folks. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, she didn't say that exactly, but she basically said this is a brown thing. They don't want us brown people to stick up for us other uh, for other brown people. That's all. That's all this is. And that's why they try to silence me. But I have social media and social media is there for a reason. So you don't silence the voice of the people. She was wearing a Joe Biden shirt, by the way. Um, No, I mean, like, look, man. I think everybody has the right to have an opinion on any kind of social matter or political matter if they choose to engage in that kind of nonsense. Me, personally, I could give two fucks about other countries and wars and shit like that. Because honestly, I'm only paying attention to what's going on in my life. I'm not going to lie. I fuck the news and fuck all that shit. But some people want to get involved in nonsense and they want to be a part of it. And that's perfectly fine. You're allowed to do that. It's part of the ride, you know. Not part of my ride, but if you wanted to be a part of your ride, it's part of your ride. And I think it's okay if this little girl wants to say, you know, go Palestine, free Palestine. And it is bullshit just, just because the, per the people that own this. Uh, studio or whatever happened to be on the other side decide to say she can't say something and they fire her ass. You know what I'm saying? So now they have to resort to getting all these old people to come back for the franchise to make some money. And this is where we're at. We're going to get Scream 7 which is basically a Scream uh, old or what's it called? Like when they, what was that all, uh, fucking that Adam Sandler movie when there's a bunch of old dudes in it, old dads, some shit like that. It's going to be like that, but it's like old scream, like old serial killers 
Who's gonna be the serial killer? Cotton's great great granddaughter and shit. Fuck you. You had something new. You had two little Mexican girls gonna take over. Talk about Mexicans and ass and wokeness and Latinx. And you fucked it up. You idiots. Jenna Ortega's hot right now. Everybody loves her. Gomer Kyle, Indy Phantom, Joku. Everybody loves that little girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a bunch of perverts everywhere. And then you fucking, you make her quit because you fire her friend for being brown proud. Fuck you. What's wrong with those browns sticking together? You dicks. That's the problem nowadays. The motherfuckers, they, they, they say, oh, I, yo, you can't say that, but you can only say this. Fuck you. How is that not totalitarianism or fascism and shit? That's some Nazi fucking mentality. There's, I, I can think for myself. I don't need to agree with you. As long as I'm, I'm not being an asshole and trying to murder you or fucking your, your life up, I have the right to believe what I want to. God damn it. Uh, yeah, anyways. That's where we're at with a scream. Ass. Just so you all know. Cheers to the whole situation. But let's get into... Something that Super Saiyan Joku is going to fucking go to the bathroom for. Probably. But they just announced that they're going to make a Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Universe theme park. And it's going to have everything. A Kame House, a Capsule Corpse, fucking Sh Shenron with the 12 Dragon Balls. It's going to be a whole fucking thing. It's even going to have the fucking... I forget what that thing's called where uh, fucking Kami is up there with fucking Mr. Popo and shit. It's gonna be sick and amazing if it ever gets built. Let me tell you why it might never even see the light of day. Because apparently this is getting built in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. Woke. Pressing the wrong buttons there, but whatever. Yeah. Now you're going to say, oh, well, they have a lot of money. Those guys, all the oil they sell to the United States so that Joe Biden can be charging you $3.50 per gallon right now. Gas is ridiculous. God damn it. Somebody get this old man out of the fucking White House now. Yeah, they have a lot of money. They have Rivers of gold, they say. But they're also some of the dumbest financiers that have ever lived on this planet because they're still living in goddamn deserts and caves. They don't understand how modern, modern fucking banking and interest and loans work. Look at these assholes. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna give them the Dragon Ball Z franchise so they can build a park in their country? Fuck you. You know, they wanted to make... The, the world's tallest Khalifa Tower. It was going to be the tallest building in the world. The clouds were going to be below it and shit. They abandoned this fucking almost like two years ago. Look at this. This is all they built and then that's it. No more. They abandoned it. It's just going to be there forever. Just a, a husk. A skeleton of, of one sixteenth of the building. Fuck you. It gets even worse. Almost... 25 years ago, they announced they were going to make the world. All these man-made little islands in the shape of countries and, and, and shit like that. And they were going to sell it to rich billionaires. There was going to be little communities and houses in there and each little things. You can live in fucking in, in the panhandle. You can live over there in Mexico. You can. It's going to be the world. It's going to be like fucking South Beach, but better. This picture on the right. Is all that's been there in the past 30 years, 15, 20 years since they announced this ass. One little fucking actual community in one island and everything else is just whatever. They don't even know what to do anymore. 
It gets even worse because they announced a project maybe five years ago. And it was going to be called The Wall. And it's a mirror wall, but the mirror wall is also solar powered. And everyone's going to live inside of the wall covered by the sun. And everything's artificial and, and uh, artificially grown and solar powered and efficient. And, and everything's electric. Everything's perfect. It's going to run sustainability forever. And it's going to go from one side of the fucking peninsula to the other side of the world. The other fucking Arabian Peninsula. It's going to stretch along and everyone in Saudi Arabia is going to live there. It's going to be community of the future. This is all they've done. They just dug a bunch of fucking holes and it's been filled up with water. And you want to give them the goddamn Dragon Ball Z theme park? Fuck yeah. They don't want fucking... They didn't even be done ever. Ever. God damn it. You, you have better chance... Of having this done in Mexico because the Mexicans will build it in a weekend. These motherfuckers are fucking idiots. There's nothing there is not gonna get built. These motherfuckers have too much money. They don't even know what they're spending it on. They're fucking idiots. The dumbest people in the world, the richest, dumbest people in the world is what I call these idiots. This was cool when I first saw it. That was badass because I saw white Americans and I saw Asians and all these people in there. And then at the end, at the end of the fucking advertisement or whatever the fuck this is, it says right there, Kidaya City. Fuck you! This will never see the light of day. Never. It'd be abandoned in two, three years. It could be a, just a bunch of holes with water and the dirt and mud. That's all it's gonna be? <laughs> Fuck you, Saudi Arabia. Fuck you, goddamn motherfuckers. Y'all are idiots. This is never gonna get done. Cheers! A waste of money. Give me the money. I'll make something better with it. Strip clubs and shit. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. To some DC ass. Because there was announced that James Gunn is making a Teen Titans movie in development for his new DC Universe. Yeah, not Young Justice, which would have been cooler. Teen Titan movie. There was a leaked synopsis sort of now I'll explain to you why it's a sort of a leaked synopsis because whenever they put a, an ad out for a job for these fucking woke as fuck motherfuckers with their parents paid for college have no skills and no talent but just because they were able to get the grades got a degree and got those jobs and that's why the movies suck ass because we got untalented motherfuckers working there making shitty special effects a bunch of those motherfuckers when they apply for jobs they gotta read what the job description is and the job description is for this movie, and it gotta be a description of the movie. This is a supposed description of the movie for the motherfuckers who are privileged enough for their parents to pay through their way through college. It says, The Teen Titans are further apart than ever before until Damian Wayne recruits Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and the new Kid Flash, probably Wally West, to join him in a fight against his own grandfather, Ra Al School. Ra Al Ghul. So, in James Gunn's universe, the Justice League and the society and all these heroes already exist without any explanation and are just going to be thrown at with people. This is basically saying there's already a Teen Titans team with Cyborg and a bunch of other motherfuckers we don't know, you know. And then this guy brings in new guys. Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy and The Flash. Do you have any idea how many noobs and how many average movie goers are going to be confused as fuck? I'm not saying this is this is trash. I'm just saying like 
I'm thinking from a point of view of somebody who's not a fucking nerd, James Gunn. You're trying to make a movie that's like four movies ahead of the introduction that the regular people know nothing about. You know, when Marvel Studios made Iron Man, Iron Man was not even a tier character or even a popular character at all for Marvel. Their comic books, their toys, their series, nobody gave a fuck about Iron Man. But they took a chance and they started the goddamn John Favreau started it with with fucking uh with Iron Man. But they started with the origin. Could you imagine if they would have just started with Avengers and they would have been like, well, who's this blonde guy and why is this guy an asshole and he's rich and why is this guy like a, a fucking douche and he's like, what's going on? And that's exactly what's going to happen here. This might end up being good for the comic book fan, but everyone else, which is probably a bigger portion of the money you'll make, the general audience is going to be completely fucking lost. James Gunn. And that's where the DC problem lies. They did it in the last movie where instead of doing individual movies for each hero, they right away forced Batman vs. Superman, which introduced Wonder Woman and introduced fucking all the other heroes, and then they did Justice League right away. And it's like, you should have done all their individual fucking movies and followed the same formula that Marvel did. But you want to be idiots and innovators, and look where innovation got you. <sighs> I don't know, man. I want to have hope for James Gunn. But I just feel like this is all one big pile of ass. Cheers. But we're not done with the DC ass. Because the Batman 2, they're saying it will begin shooting. In April 2025. <laughs> One year from now, a movie that should have started filming two years ago, probably, will be shooting. One year from now, and that means that it probably won't even come out till 2026. Ah, uh, October 2nd, I think, of 2026. So that's even more than a year from when they even start shooting. I mean, I don't even give a fuck. I remember watching it, and I thought it was cool. But so much time, I, I feel like so much time has passed by that I don't give a fuck anymore. About this franchise. I don't give a fuck about Pattinson. I don't give a fuck about none of this. I lost. It lost my interest. And even though I'm sure it's going to be ass. The interest right now is on whatever James Gunn is going to cook up. That we're still waiting on. Because we still don't know. We still haven't seen. And that's where my interest is. I, this is. You lost. It's like giving a kid with low attention span. Well, three years have gone by. My attention is gone from this ass. Ah. Warner is so fucked in so many ways. They're just idiots with the way they're running everything over. But there are some spoilers coming from this because they're saying that for the Batman Part 2, they are looking for a Harvey Dent. Maybe not Two-Face specifically, but just Harvey Dent. And they're saying that right now they're looking at um, Boyd Holbrook. This guy who played, uh, he came out in the Logan movie and he's been in some other shit as a redneck and some ass like that. Obviously, they're trying to keep him like young and skinny 
don't be bigger than Pattinson because you still got to look like you look like he's a villain. So that's why they chose Paul Dano because he's scrawny and they're choosing this motherfucker because he's scrawny. They don't want to get a big motherfucker to fight fucking Pattinson unless it's going to be Bane. They can get Bane Dave Bautista, but you know he's going to be in the James Gunn universe. And this universe has nothing to do with the James Gunn universe. Which is what's fucking everything up. Uh, I don't even know what if, if any of this is good or not. Like, he's a good actor and shit, but I don't... I mean, what does any of this mean? Two years from now? Do I even care? Am I going to be alive? God damn it. You see how all of this is very disappointing? And underwhelming when we get down to the bare... Oh, here's something that could happen two years from now. If I don't die, or the actor... Or the director doesn't change his mind, or somebody doesn't drop out, or there's another world war and some pandemic or some bullshit that cancels everything we're talking about right now. Unless this is filming right now, what the fuck does this all even mean? Oh, it was a good week up until I started doing this show, is all I'm saying, because I gotta review all this ass. We're moving on for this Batman dick. And we're moving on to some Marvel ass. And we're going to go into the big ass. And it's none other than big ass Florence Pugh, who was on IG yesterday. And she posted a story because they started filming the Thunderbolts. Oh, yeah. she's all excited. And she, I would be too if I fucking had an ass like that. That's all I'm saying. Um, but here's a quick video to show you what she was talking about and what happened. All right, here we go. Hey, guys. How you doing? I know that I've kind of dropped off for a little bit, but that's partly because I uh, was whisked off to Atlanta to go and shoot a movie that I'm not really allowed to talk much about. Um, but I can show you some things. Sneakily, as long as you don't tell anyone. I can show you this. I can show you our fantastic AD team. I can show you her. We met on Black Widow. This is Chessie. I can show you a sneak peek of some of the sets. We're in the studio right now. We're in the studio that we're shooting in on this movie that I can't tell you much about. But look at that. That's Annabelle. That means they're shooting. I'll be quiet now. And then I can show you that. What's that? What's going to be in there? Oh, and I can show you Jake. <clears throat> Jake. <laughs> this is Jake, our director. Hi, everybody. What are what are we uh, what are we allowed to say we're doing? I don't think you're even allowed to be doing this most likely. <laughs> I know. I let, someone's going to come and rugby tackle me. Yes. But but <laughs> but what are we? Um... We're just making a little movie. Oh. Little movie. Little movie. <laughs> How you doing? We're good. Yeah, yeah. Can I show you some of this? Yeah, I'm show anything. That's enough. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That is it. That's all we're allowed to see. I can show you better that. No, I can't. I can't show you that. I can show these guys, and we can say we're having an amazing time, and I can't wait to see what we've made. Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, so, yeah, this little girl, is they're shooting the Thunderbolts already. Um, she's British as fuck, and then she tries to do a Russian accent in the movie. <clears throat> but some of the new... Behind the scenes, shit that they're saying is that she just spoiled was that the Thunderbolts, and I unfortunately cropped it wrong, <laughs> so you don't see it. It's all being done as we see it. But it has a little asterisk at the end of the Thunderbolts, and they're saying, oh, they changed the titles and shit. Uh, so I don't know what that means, why they put an asterisk at the end of Thunderbolts. I really don't know what the fuck that means. The cut is saying that Florence Pugh should just show us her tits. I agree. Uh, if you want to see her tits, go to fucking um, 
Well, I mean, just go online. Every time she goes to a premiere, she's wearing see-through stuff. Or just watch Oppenheimer. They're sweaty in that one. Uh, but every time she goes to a premiere or to some kind of fashion event, just go online. She's wearing see-through. Her nipples are all over the internet. That's nothing new. Uh, but something that is new is that people are saying that this movie has completely changed since Kevin Feige came back from vacation or wherever the fuck he was masturbating or wherever. So as Captain America is going through reshoots and being redone, completely won over, the same way Daredevil is being redone, and the same way Echo was redone and made into ass, because Echo was ass. This has changed. And apparently, the suicide mission that Marvel's Suicide Squad, which is called the Thunderbolts, is the suicide mission they're going on, or before Feige came back, was supposed they were going to go into Wakanda to steal Vibranium. That has changed. Apparently, this little girl already gave away spoilers, according to the leakers. And they're saying that the set we're seeing, where it's like, if you look back here, it looks like a lab or a fucking laboratory of sorts and shit. Uh, and they're saying like, that is where they're keeping the sentry hostage. And their mission is to go and take them, take him from wherever he's at. So the sentry used to be a government experiment. But now it's going to be that the sentry is an experiment of some other government. And our government wants to go steer the, steal their experiment. And that's what this movie's about. Supposedly. I don't know. We haven't seen enough. And it, this movie's already changed three or four times as far as the spoilers and leaks have gone. So I honestly don't know what to believe. Obviously the sentry is in it. I don't know how what kind of role he'll play but if it's like that that makes more sense and it would probably fit more in line with the mcu if he was an experiment by some other country or somebody who was working on him and they sent in these guys to go steal him and bring him back to the usa for shield or whatever the fuck they're building um i don't know again these are all rumors and, and and non-facts and we don't have anything the only thing as far as, far as spoilers is, was, is that we have is what this little girl has been showing us here on Instagram which isn't much everything has changed since Kevin Feige has come back this whole movie has changed they're saying that Bucky is no longer the lead this little girl is the lead and that people are going to die most likely Bucky and the Red Guardian are going to die that's just a, a fan theory um, but yeah, it's not going to be called Thunderbolts because of Thunderbolts Ross. It's going to be called Thunderbolts because this little girl, when she was young, her soccer team where she played was called the Thunderbolts. And so she names the, the team, the Thunderbolts, since she's the leader and shit. And that's the explanation. But let's move on to some more ass. And we got some actual good ass. And it's Deadpool 3 merchandise that spoils ass from the movie. And it's a bunch of different variants that Deadpool will have. Because at the end of the movie, supposedly, we're going to have an endgame kind of battle with Wolverine and Deadpool with an army of either Wolverines and Deadpool variants versus the villains, which is probably going to be a bunch of weird fucking characters. It's going to be a Professor Xavier's fucking twin or fucking uh, girl version bald uh, little fucking princess diana and shit and it's gonna be saber tooth or he's gonna die already and a fucking uh, uh a bunch of other people from other movies i don't know a bunch of ass but for sure they're showing us spoilers here because we got none other than baby deadpool which is probably going to be all CGI because they're not going to get a little baby and put him there with a mask that's inhumane. He could fucking suffocate and shit wearing a mask. 
So it's gonna be all CGI and shit. Little baby there pissing on himself. Kid pool. Some 12 year old they hire probably some the son of one of the producers or Blake Lively's cousin or some ass like Taylor Swift's little brother. Something like that. Kid pool's gonna be in it. Deadpool there. You know, going like this and shit. And then we have that little disgusting little dog that we already saw. That dog pool. The little fucking full of rabies and alopecia and shit. The disgusting little dog with fucking allergies and shit. And then we have something called head pool. Some little head with little dismembered arms and half legs. But it's mostly just a head in a helicopter on his head. And that's how he moves around. Well, this is all going to be some kind of CGI fuck fest. It's all going to say. Uh, I want to see more from the next trailer. This is probably going to be the only good Marvel movie. But it might be a boring Marvel movie. Maybe that's why they're not showing as much in the trailer. Because now they're saying that at least 70 to 80% of the movie will take place in the void. That place where when the TVA zaps you, it's like a wasteland. And then there's like that big uh, shadow monster trying to eat you. That's where the whole movie takes place. Maybe the beginning before they get there. There's ex their Deadpool and chasing and different universes. But eventually him and Wolverine will get zapped by the TBA and they're going to end up here. And that's where the movie's going to take place. Maybe just the first 15 minutes, you'll actually see cameos and a bunch of different shit. But the movie movie will take place in this fucking wasteland, which is why we've only seen the leaks coming from the desert and shit makes a lot of sense. Ah, uh, well, there is more spoilers that are coming out of this. And that is that this movie is going to introduce a concept to the MCU. A concept that's been uh, uh, theorized and, and, and probably guessed by a lot of people. A concept that relates to the Molecule Man. And the Molecule Man in the comic books is a being that the Beyonders, who wrote the multiverse and created it, they made the Molecule Man... And made him to not have a variant. In every universe, he's exactly the same. He's not different. But they made him like that because he's basically a time bomb for them to, like, when they want to reset everything, they set him off and he blows up every universe. And then the Beyonders can rewrite everything. Doctor Doom kills the Beyonders. And takes the power of the Molecule Man and rewrites the world. Anyways, that's how Secret War starts. They're saying that in this movie, the Deadpool movie, they're going to introduce this concept, but it's a little different. They're going to say that each universe has one person. And if that person dies, the whole universe will start to fall apart. That's really different. That's really not the same. And it's going outside the box and boundaries of what I thought was possible in the MCU. Okay. So then. Then what does the. What do they call incursions? Then that, that doesn't make any sense. So there's a, if somebody dies and the universe dies, then what is the incursions then? Because you already introduced the incursions. The incursions is like two universes crashing into each other because people have been uh, abusing the multiverse and traveling back and forth. Now you're saying that it's because somebody dies. It's just completely asinine and, and, and different than anything you've been explaining to us in the past. That's what bothers me. And it gets even worse because they're saying that Sony is now demanding Kevin Feige to say, hey, make the person who's this one being in the MCU be Tom Holland. We want Tom Holland, our Spider-Man, to be this person. He wants to be, he want, we want Sony, we want the money. We want him to be the most important thing in the universe. Make it happen. 
<sighs> I mean, already you're introducing stuff that's contradicting your past fucking timelines and shit you've explained. And now Sony's butting in saying, you have to make it this character, our character, because we want the money. This is just ass written all over it. And now, now I'm getting worried about Deadpool 3. Yep. But enough about that, because all that is rumors. Let's get into something that is not rumors. Well, actually, no, this is more rumors. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are all rumors. But they're saying that the new MacGuffin in the MCU is supposedly the Quantum Bands and the Ten Rings and that these things are like the new Infinity Stones that will tie in the Multiverse Saga. How? What do the Ten Rings do? You just flick them around and push people and, and, and whip them around like fucking saucers. What do the Bengals do? Oh, she makes little cubes and ass and opens portals. What does any of that have to do with the multiverse and dimensions? Maybe the Bengals. But what are the rings? How are they the MacGuffin that you need them for what? Ah. This just sounds like a big convoluted mess where they didn't even know. This is like they're writing it as they go along. If this is true, because this is rumors, this is just like they're writing it as they go along. So it makes no fucking sense. They're also reporting this week that Mr. Tony Stark and Mr. Peter Parker, Tom Holland, RDJ, will meet again in the MCU. And that excites me and excites everyone. But it makes you question and wonder what's going on here. And as we analyze this, it starts opening up possibilities. Because we all know our RDJ, our Tony Stark died in Infinity End Games or whatever that movie was called. He died. And he ain't coming back, folks. But if he's signed to come back in the movie, that means he's only possibly going to play a variant. Because the other guy's dead. He can't come back. It has to be a variant. So, yes, it's possible that Peter Parker will meet a Tony Stark again and bond with him again. But it won't be the same one. Very possible. Very exciting. But here's where it gets into crazy, unexpected possibilities. What if Marvel is thinking, since we can't do Kang the woman beater, he beat up a white woman, smaller, half his size, half his age, defenseless, beat the shit out of her. Tore her ear apart. Broke her, or her fingers. We can't fucking use him anymore. He's going to jail. Why don't we bring back Robert Downey Jr. As a Kang variant. The superior Iron Man. Evil Tony Stark. Will now be the bad guy of the multiverse uh, saga and they will say he is of Kang variant oh yeah they could save their entire franchise just by doing that by bringing back our DJ not just as a Tony Stark variant but as a bad Tony Stark Superior Iron Man, Kang variant from another multiverse, now becoming the bad guy. 
and Secret Wars would move on. That'd be sick as fuck. That'd be sick as fuck. It's my own theory, fantasy, because the rumor is that RDJ and obviously Tom Holland, they're going to meet up again in Secret Wars. It won't be RDJ fucking our Iron Man because he's dead. It'll be a different variant. But I hope that it'll be a villain and he will be the one who takes over. From Kang, superior Iron Man. The real bad guy of the multiverse. That would be badass to make our DJ play a bad guy and Tom Holland having to fight him, his mentor. Oh, dude, they have gold. Kevin Feige, if you're why you're never going to watch this channel because you're too pussy to watch it. But God damn it. Someone should fucking tell him this. It's got Take all my money! That's all I'm saying if you do that. Alright. Let's move on to the ass. And it's the big ass. X-Men 97. They did the Madeline Pryor episode. Compared to the first two episodes, this is better. I'm really upset that they took Look, I'm going to praise it a lot. You'll see why. But I also want to shit on it. Because I'm really upset that they took this humongous arc. This humongous character comic book arc. And cr crunched it into one episode. When they teased it at the end of the last one. I thought this was going to be the whole series. I did. I honestly did. I thought that was going to be the whole series. The Madeline Pryor was going to be the bad guy. And at the very end, after they defeat her, they would find out that it was sinister behind it all. They fucking crunched everything into one episode, bro. <laughs> Oh, wow. I was just like, what? Already? Like, I was not expecting her to turn into the Goblin Queen, Queen Madeline Pryor right away. Maybe next, the next episode. She did it within the first fucking five minutes. I, I'll give them props. This was sexy as fuck. They kept her sexy, voluptuous. It, it was it was sexy and hot, and it was better than the other two episodes because I told you the other women uh, they took they took their sexiness away. They did it for because Jean is not sexy there, not at all. And then when she turns into Madeline Pryor, it's like titties and cleavage and hips. And there's even a part I don't have it where they do the basic instinct. Where she has her legs crossed and then she opens them like that. But you see a shadow from her skirt. It's fucking perfect. I mean, that that shit, I'll give it up to them. They they captured the essence of Madeline Pryor good. But this was super right away in your face that came out of nowhere. Uh, what? Oh, my God. So during the episode, she right away she gets she gets angry that she's the clone and she turns into Madeline Pryor right away and for no explanation at all, which also bothers me. No explanation at all. She's I'm the Goblin Queen, but why? You're supposed to sell your soul to a demon and all this. They didn't say nothing. It was just like let's just rush through it and rush through the whole storyline. That's what it was. During it. They all start having visions and crazy shit starts happening. They start seeing ghosts and then zombies and shit. And Gambit. Gambit ends up seeing pretty much a recreation of the comic book of the Savage Land. Uh, Rogue and, and Magneto. But then they're melting into each other. And I gotta tell you. That was badass. I was just like, I was, at first I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then they were melting into each other and being disgusted. This reminds me of, um, what's that movie called? End of Days? 
where the fucking devil goes and has sex with the wife and the the fucking daughter of the guy he has dinner with and then while he's fucking them he's also melting into their skin it's crazy shit um i'll give them praise for doing that because i was just like what the fuck's going this out of it i'll also give them praise for at least sticking with it because look if you watched last week when I talked about the stuff that I did like that they teased, they this could have been the whole season. And it was in one episode. Nathan got infected by the techno virus by Sinister right away. Oh my god, they stopped Sinister right away. They stop him. Sinister leaves. And then they give this is where i'm saying then now they give an explanation why is bishop on the team i said why is he in there because he's the one who takes nathan back into the future they also explain that beast explains like that oh your thing has been broken and i've been trying to fix it so you can go back into the future that's why you're here you waited until the third episode to tell me that you could have said that in the first two episodes why is bishop there you waited until the third episode to explain to me why the black guy is there? Fucking bullshit. And then that's why he's there. Just to serve the purpose of taking the little boy right away. And that's it. This could have been the whole fucking season fleshed out into a really good storyline. Like they did back in the day when they did Days of Future Past. When they did the Sentinel story, when they did the Brotherhood of Mutants, these were episodes to be continued, to be continued. It took a whole season before you told the whole story. You told it in one fucking episode. <sighs> so now I know the format they're doing. Everything, every big storyline is going to be crunched into one episode. And the next storyline, they teased it at the end. Is Rogue, or not Storm, Powerless, meets Forge, who tells her, I can help you get your powers back. She's all excited. In the comic books, it turns out that Forge is the one who accidentally built the gun that took her powers away in the first episode we saw. He built the gun, but he was actually tricked into it. He built it for somebody. He didn't know they were going to use it for that. And that's why he that happened. And so now he feels guilty. And he wants to build a machine to get her powers back. But while he's doing that, they fall in love. And in the comic books, when she finds out that he's the one who built the gun in the first place, then she dumps his ass. And that's what they're going to crunch into one episode. Not the next episode. I'll, tell, I'll explain to you in a little bit. But in later on in the series, one whole episode is going to be dedicated to this. And it's all going to be crunched in one episode. That's what they're doing. Big storylines. I, I can see it now. Big storylines for the comic books are going to be crunched into one episode snippets. Lame. There is one weird thing. Because in the original, when we saw Forge, he was old and he was in the future. So this is a young Forge. Are they even going to mention how he's connected to the future Forge? Does he know Bishop? Is he going to know what's going on? He says he knows Charles Xavier. For those of you who don't know what Forge's powers are, is that he can learn anything from any machine. Like if he, you give him a computer or a laptop... He'll right away know how it works, what it's made of, and how to build one. Not only that, but he can learn, like, he, like you want me to build you something? What do you want? Oh, I want this thing that does this and this and this. Okay, and he figures it out and he builds it. That's his mutant ability. It's weird. It's just really smart. It can build stuff or learn stuff from machines. That's his mutant power. It's kind of weird. Just being a nerd is his mutant power. So, yeah, that's where we're going from this. Look, this third episode was better, but it was still ass in the way that this could have been the entire fucking season fleshed out into this compelling, badass storyline. And you finished it in one episode, and that's what they're doing. 
every episode is going to be obviously uh with storylines crunched into one another and ass uh but i will tell you what the next episode is because it's called uh Mo motendo which is mondo uh mondo world when they go to mondo world and shit with their mondo's gonna come back and capture all of them and this time mondo's i already know the spoilers mondo has some technology where he's gonna s turn them all into like a uh, 16-bit arcade and so the whole episode is gonna look like a 16-bit arcade like an old-school retro game the whole episode the next episode i'm going to fucking jizz all over because that sounds badass we're gonna see all of them like little fucking 16-bit figures cross because uh, it's not gonna be 3d obviously so it's gonna be like pla platforming from side scrolling <laughs> it's gonna finally be badass i can't wait to see that i really cannot wait to see that um eh, i can't shit on this one except for the fact that they just they sh they, sh they ruined everything by making it into one episode um yeah the animation still sucks i don't like it uh, it's weird looking and shit. But this was not as bad as the other two episodes. The last thing I do want to point out in this particular episode is what everyone's been talking about. That everyone won't, won't stop talking about, actually. And that is the fact that Morph and Wolverine, or at the very least, Morph is gay. Because Morph sees wolverine in the showers and he goes hey wolverine you need some help uh with those hard to reach places uh and he, he pretends he pulls out some claws and walks into the shower with him and shit but like i said this goes on to the episode where there's weird uh uh paranormal shit going on before you find out it's the goblin queen queen but this is saying that morph at the very least, Morph is fucking gay for Wolverine. Apparently. Um, I found it funny. I didn't find it... As long as Wolverine's not the one being gay, because it was proven this was an illusion, so it wasn't Wolverine. Uh, as long as it's not Wolverine being gay, and it's just Morph being fucking Morph, then I guess that's okay. Uh, Because he could have been gay. I mean, if you think about it in the old series... He pretended to be Jean Grey, and then he fucking tricked Logan and was making out with him and coming on to him. And it, and it was more. And even then, as a kid, I was just like, that's kind of gay. <laughs> you know, that you turn into a girl and then kiss some guy that's your friend to trick him. That's some pretty gay shit. So, I mean, I didn't find this offensive. As long as they don't reveal in the next few episodes that Logan is also gay. This guy, DeMaio, got fired for a reason, people. Something is gonna come up in the next couple of episodes. Now, maybe not the next episodes, but the next few episodes. Something is gonna come up that is going to break the internet that these assholes did on this series. There is some reason why this guy got fired. And it's not because he's flexing on OnlyFans. He got fired for a reason. And we're going to find out in a few episodes. Is all I'm saying. Uh, anyways. Uh, enough of this ass. Alright. Cheers, y'all. Alright, let's end this broadcast. With the main ass. The main shit. And it's none other than Godzilla X Kong. The new empire. And I'm just going to have this shit playing in the background. Uh, if I can ever get to it. Uh, where am I at? Uh, sorry, you guys. <laughs> I'm fucking up left and right. Godzilla Kong. The new empire. Uh, hopefully we don't get banned for this. And I'm going to have just the fights in the background. Uh, the coolest parts. 
Uh, I will say that I thoroughly 100% enjoyed the shit out of this fucking movie. This is not a movie about humans at all. <laughs> this is not a movie about humans at all. This whole movie is about, and you know what? I don't even know why it's called Godzilla. This whole movie is about Kong. It's about Kong. Um, and all the, if you've been watching us, our, our channel, all the spoilers we have ever said since, since the first teaser came out are all true. All of it, everything. So we've already had told you the whole movie. So. The lure, the lure of the movie is explaining, you know, I, you know what, I'll just go through the movie. The movie starts with Kong, and uh, and there's a lot of, a lot of 20, 15 minutes straight of no humans, no dialogue, just expressions in the face of Kong and, and other fucking creatures and shit. It's crazy. <laughs> And so all, some, a lot of the parts of the movie, it's left to you because there's no dialogue. It's left to you to kind of understand that you kind of know what's going on. <laughs> and you kind of do with the way they fucking make things look and shit. But basically Kong is looking for family and he doesn't find anybody down there in the hollow earth. But the humans, they, they say, well, we really only explored 5% of the hollow earth. It's humongous. So we don't know. But Godzilla, um, who's been defending the humans from, from Titans, suddenly wakes up and and he gets like pissed off. And people don't know why. And he starts like he starts breaking into nuclear reactors and absorbing all their power, and the governments are trying to stop him. But they're saying, well, like, he's not hurting. He's not trying to hurt us. He's just sucking up all the reactor's powers. Like, he's doing this for a reason. And so they don't know why he's doing it. And so he's glowing, like, super blue. He's super blue now at, at one point of the movie. That's all Godzilla's doing. God, this is not a Godzilla movie. They just show him in little clips what he's doing. And so he's just going from reactor to reactor, absorbing energy. Meanwhile, Kong is in the, you know, in the bottom searching for his family. And in one of the instances, Kong is fucking uh, uh, running away from some dogs. And he builds a trap. And the trap, this hole falls and all the dogs, I don't know, some ass happens. And, and there's a big crater. But that crater opens and it opens a new part of the hollow earth. Like there's more underneath it. There's more caverns, and underneath the caverns, there's more grass and more shit. And so that opens more, more a bigger area for Kong to explore. And then Godzilla, after he absorbs all these, like, nuclear react... Oh, yeah, well, Kong is in the Hollow Earth, and when he's down there, in this new part of the Hollow Earth, he sees this little monkey. And, uh, and Kong's, like, surprised. And the monkey, when he turns on him... And attacks him and then all these other bigger monkeys show up all of a sudden and Kong starts fighting them. And uh and there's like this funny part where the because the bigger monkeys are attacking him, but also the little monkey is attacking Kong. And so Kong finally it's crazy because you could tell I'm sorry I dropped my joint and I'm trying to tell the story. Fuck! I'm not even gonna pick it up. Oh here it is. Um, you could tell that Kong is physically larger than the other monk. The other monkeys resemble like chimpanzees, whereas Kong resembles more of a gorilla. So he is bigger than them. And there's a point where Kong grabs the little monkey and he starts using him as a weapon to hit the other ones. It's fucking hilarious. And that little monkey's getting beat the fuck up. And so then <laughs> once he beats up all the other bigger monkeys... They all run away, and Kong is left with the little one. And so I'm telling you, there's no dialogue. But basically, from the expression, since what's going on, Kong is basically telling him, take me to where the fuck these guys, like, where you're from. Take me to where all you motherfuckers are from. 
And so the little monkey's all mad and reluctant, but the little monkey goes and Kong starts following him. There's no dialogue. There's a there's 12, 15, there's 20 minute scenes sometimes with no dialogue. It's just fucking Kong and monkeys and expressions. And it's up to you to figure out the story. Um, so this is not a story about humans. The stories of humans are in there, but this is not a story about humans. This is all the monsters. Godzilla then finds another Titan in the Arctic, and that Titan's name is Tiamat, and it's like this water serpent that looks so fucking badass. And this water serpent, because he's in the Arctic, he absorbs the Aurora Borealis, because that's where most of the sun's rays hits, is in the Arctic, and it absorbs it, and 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 that's why he's full of radiation, and he's and he's pink. And Godzilla, since he's trying to power up because he senses something, he's already included. He already ate all the nuclear reactors, and he's super glowing blue. And he goes after this Titan, and they get into a fight, and it pisses me off because this Titan looks so fucking badass. His name's Tiamat. He looks so cool, dude. And he's only there for like less than a minute. Godzilla kills him right away. And once he kills him, he goes into his lair, and that's where he cocoons and starts observing, absorbing all the radiation that this Titan had in there. That's why he turns pink. That's why this, because he's absorbing the, ener the energy this fucking thing had. Um, and so that's the re-explanation why Godzilla's doing, like, he's getting ready for something. Like, he senses something big is coming. So then Kong is down at the bottom and he finally the little monkey takes him to where the, all the other monkeys are and he meets the scar king and they get into a huge fight and uh you know kong whoops his ass but the scar king like we said in the spoilers has this dog which is shimu it's another titan you'll see it in a little bit and he's pretty much like his dog and he controls him because he has a crystal on a whip and if he points the crystal, the fucking thing has to do what he says. They don't explain nothing about that. The spoilers we said months, months ago. Explain it. And I think that was cut out of the movie. The spoilers explain that there's a rock that fell from the fucking sky, a meteorite. That's where all these crystals are from. Uh, I'll, I'll explain to you in, in a little bit about the crystals. All these crystals are from. And that there was a Godzilla. Not this Godzilla. But there was a Godzilla that started eating the meteorite. And when he ate it, he turned into Shimu. He, he, he mutated and turned into this bigger thing. And so now this thing depends on that little rock for food. Or whatever. And so then this monkey finds the last piece of fucking thing and that's how he's able to control him. That's the reasoning behind it. But they never explain it on here. You just see that this monkey has this whip with this crystal on it. And he uses the crystal to control this other creature, which you'll see in a little bit. Obviously, King Kong is a lot bigger, built like a gorilla. Whereas this other fucking creature is built like an orangutan. So Kong whoops his ass with ease. Um, because he's... Honestly, he's smaller than Kong. He is smaller than Kong and he's thinner. But he just has that whip. But the whole thing about his power is that fucking little crystal at the end of it. And you'll see in a little bit where he, he pulls it out and they bring out this... And it's crazy because when they pull out this creature, the Shimu... Shimu is like in chains but the chains are actually made out of bones as well so it's kind of weird um it's kind of weird that this they don't explain why this creature bows to him here he's about to use this little crystal thing to fucking uh call out this creature shimu is what it's called and shimu built the first ice age or whatever so a little bit after this as you're seeing this they start explaining that uh, the lore about it. So there's these people down there. Uh, a long time ago, in the old days, there were humans and titans. And the apes protected the humans. 
But then this bad ape wanted to take over the world and he found this crystal or whatever and he, he found this titan and he controls it. And he brought upon the first ice age to try to destroy the world and destroy the humans. So the humans prayed to Godzilla and Godzilla came out and he pushed all the monkeys to the hollow earth and then he trapped them in this cave which is what Kong unfortunately opened up. And uh, that's where they've been the whole time. That's what the lore is. And so here is Shimu. And now, you know, he's releasing him. And this is what I'm saying. He points the crystal and whatever he t points the crystal, the fucking thing does it. And they don't give an explanation as to why. The spoilers that we learned months ago explained it. But the movie doesn't explain it, which also leaves me as to why the movie doesn't explain it. It was this cut out or they deleted scenes. I don't know. Didn't explain. So, yeah, that's how Kong, like we said, the spoilers, that's how he gets his eyes burnt and he gets frostbite and he runs away. The little monkey helps him because the the other mon the red monkey fucking kills uh, the father or the mother. I don't know. There's no dialogue, so you're just guessing what's going on. He killed a relative of the little monkey, so the little monkey joins Kong instead. Yeah, so all the monkeys and are now riding this fucking white Godzilla, and they're going to go fucking find Godzilla and, and Kong and kill everyone. Godzilla wakes up, and he's all powered up, and he doesn't know why he's powered up, apparently. And then they tell, oh yeah. They go to this fucking, the humans, they go to this fucking uh, underground world, like under there, there's all these crystals and pyramids, and they found these pygmy people, and that's where the little Asian girl is from, and they all communicate telepathically, and they can also lift things, like big blocks, like with magnetism, with without any effort, and they're like, they're kind of giving explanations how the pyramids were created, you know, hello. Um, and so then they fucking say that, they have a cocoon there and that the cocoon is Mothra and only the little girl can wake it up with her powers. And that's why they needed her. And uh, and also there's poor. I don't know why where they live. There's portals that go up to the earth. And so all the monkeys and the, they're coming with the whole army. And they say Kong's not going to be able to fight him alone. And so then the little girl tells Kong go get help. Go get Godzilla. And so Kong goes to the surface through one of the portals and he goes to Egypt and that's where Godzilla is and uh, and that's where you see the trailer where they fight Kong is basically trying to tell Godzilla like hey come help me um and it got, oh yeah Kong has I'll show you right here Kong has a fucking a platinum tooth because in the beginning of the movie he has a toothache and he's in a lot of pain and there's a new character, a human character, and there's the there's the platinum tooth right there. There's a human character and his name is Trapper and he's a veterinarian for Titans. Yeah, go figure why they have one of those. And so that's why fucking he has a they took they take they sedate him, take his tooth out, and they put a fucking metal tooth on there for him. And uh, the there's a joke in there where the monkeys make fun of Kong because he does, he's missing a tooth. They make fun of him. That's fucking lame. Um, and which is why also they have a, a glove for Kong because apparently the government was making a glove for him for years already when they discovered him in case they needed. I don't know the stupid expl stupid explanation, but that then that's why they give him the glove because he has frostbite. But he fights Godzilla. He's beating the shit out of them. They're both beating the shit out of each other. They destroy Egypt. The pyramids are gone. They destroy the pyramids and the city. Oh, and mind you, the whole time you're watching this, um, this is what I'm telling you. This is not a movie about humans. They don't give a fuck about the humans. The whole time you're fucking watching this is you're wondering, oh, these humans are dying right now because there's monsters just trashing everything. <laughs> <laughs> there's all these innocent people dying left and right and and then the thoughts will come into your head because it's happening and you don't give a fuck because there's monsters fighting and that's what you want to see which is crazy but the little girl wakes up mothra over there in the underground with all these pygmy people and it looks bad this looks more like mothra than it did the last time 
Because she's not blue or nothing. She's a little bit of blue, but she looks really fucking Mothra, especially her face. And so while Godzilla and Kong are fighting, Mothra ends up interrupting them because Godzilla just wants to fight Kong. Godzilla knows there's a threat, but he doesn't know why, and that's why he's powering up. And he thinks it's Kong. And when Mothra shows up, Mothra fucking fucks them both up. And they realize that, oh shit, okay, uh, Mothra, I guess Mothra communicates with Godzilla. Yeah, he just suplexed Kong. Yeah, he suplexed Kong. Uh, it wasn't on purpose. It's just that Kong was on top of the pyramid and it just went like that. And then a lot of people complaining about that. But Mothra breaks it all up and explains to Godzilla what's going on. And they decide to team up. All of this is no dialogue. It's just growls and expressions, by the way. That's why I'm telling you, this movie is not about the humans. And they all, like, growl and whatever. And they end up going underground. And there's a badass Avengers-style fucking a face-off civil war where they're running towards each other. Even Kong, because this guy's riding Shimu. So Kong starts riding Godzilla like a crazy ass. And then they jump towards each other all Avengers-style. And then the humans take away the gravity. Don't ask me how. Some bullshit about liquids and pyramids and crystals. And there's no gravity. And so everybody's floating around fighting in anti-gravity. It's crazy, bro. This is all happening underground. But the monkey says he's a portal. And he grabs his fucking friend and they go through it. And then Kong falls through the portal. And that's how they end up in Buenos Aires or Rio de Janeiro. Where the Cristo of the Andes is. And this is where I'm telling you. You also start thinking. Because everybody's at the beach. And you start thinking. Everybody's fucking dying. Everybody's dying. All the people there. Everyone's dying. Um, Pretty much there's a big CGI fuck fest. For 20 minutes. Of uh, a tag team. You know. Kong versus this red monkey. Versus Godzilla. Versus Shimu. And then they switch partners. And back and forth bro. The little monkey even shows up and the little monkey destroys the fucking crystal that is controlling the, the Shimu or whatever. It's nuts, bro. Um, I love this because it's just kaiju shit. It's just kaijus fighting and shit more than human story. Um, but yeah, that's where it comes down to is the crystal that's being controlled. The little monkey is the hero. The little Kong, Suko. They don't even say his name is Suko. It's just a toy told us his name was Suko. But he's the one who destroys the crystal. And when he destroys the crystal right there, ah, like an idiot. He destroys it. Fucking um, that's where they lose control. Like they lose control of the of the other guy, and then they're able to beat the red monkey. They even get the Shimu to destroy him. He fucking freezes him. And then Kong. Smashes him into bits bit, bits and pieces after he's frozen. With his new glove of strength and power. And shit. Right there. Oh, it destroys the shit out of him. And then at the end of the movie. um, Godzilla. This is weird because I don't know what was happening to the sky. I think Shimu was starting an ice age, but they never really explained what was happening. The sky turned black. I don't know. Like I said, there's no explanation. The monsters are doing the story, so there's no explanations from the humans. But Godzilla shoots into the sky, and then the sky turns blue and nice again. I don't know what that means. And, uh... Yeah, I just like I said, there's no dialogue or explanations. Like this is a monster movie. But Godzilla goes to to hibernate and he goes in the Colosseum and he falls asleep there <laughs> over there in Greece. And that's where he falls asleep. And then Kong goes back to the underground. And now he has a new friend with him who he rides and his little companion, little Kong, and now he's the king of all the monkeys. And they're going to rule forever in the Hollow Earth. And that's how the movie ends. Look, this movie is not some crazy Academy Award winning fucking badass human. This is not even close to being like the TV show from Paramount that we just saw that was actually really good. That was more of a human story. This has nothing to do with humans. 
there is no human element or there's humans in this and there's actors and there's you know obviously there has to be humans but there's no story no nothing significant about them this is all about the monsters this is all this movie is and even though they're saying this movie's got in a rotten score on the Rotten Tomatoes right now, I promise you this movie will probably make more than Doom. Dune. Than Dune 2. People want to watch something like this. They do. People don't give a fuck about Marvel anymore. They don't give a fuck. About People want to watch this. They want to see Godzilla and monkeys and animals and shit and a half, man. That's all, that's all they want to do. That's all they want to see. And I'm telling you, this movie's going to be a hit. A hit. And I can't believe it. But Jose Trevino's here. Let me hit it for this asshole. Repites tu nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ok? <laughs> Ah, oh, Trevino, you're the shit. Final verdict on this. I liked it. This is exactly what I always wanted a Godzilla movie to be. Just monsters fighting and telling a story mainly from the monster's perspective. I will tell you that this is not a Go Godzilla movie. This is a King Kong movie. 100%. You should have called this King Kong the New Empire. That's what it should have been called. Godzilla's a side character at the most. He is. He's in it. But he's just acting like some wild beast with no explanation. He doesn't even know what's going on. He's like a big dumbass. Matra has to come in and explain it to him. Kong is the star of this movie. He is the lead of this movie. This movie is called Kong the New Empire. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good fucking movie. I think it's perfect for the MonsterVerse. I hope to God they continue making these movies and they take this movie as a blueprint because I want to see I want to see Guy again. I want to see fucking um Destroyer. I want to see uh Jet Jaguar. I want to see fucking more uh see King Caesar, Angerus. I want to see more fucking kaijus from the Toho series in this fucking franchise. That's all I want to say. Uh, but that's it. I recommend this if you're a kaiju, if you're a monster, movie, loving fan. I highly recommend this. Um, this is not a movie for everybody. Not at all, by far. Uh, but like I said, it's not bad. I think it's a good popcorn flick. At the very least. Uh, and I recommend you go see it over this uh, Easter holiday. And I, I guarantee you a lot of people are going to see it this Easter holiday. This is going to be a hit. Guarantee you next Friday we're going to be talking about how much money this is making. And that's just my prediction. That's my prediction. I don't know how much money it's making right now. The Rotten Tomato score is below 60. But I'm telling you this is going to be a huge hit. Just you wait. Next week we'll talk about it. But I have done enough ranting for tonight. Jose Trevino, thank you for being here. I'm glad you're going to watch the replay this weekend. I'll put it as early as I can tomorrow. Hopefully 8 or 9 a.m. But I will leave you with a little bit of life advice for tonight. Because I've done with my ranting. And my life advice is this. Be productive. All right. Don't be that guy who just works all the time. Comes home. But watches TV, eats and masturbates and goes to sleep. Be productive. Do something more than what you're required to do in your everyday. All right. I, before I go to sleep, I make a list of all the things I have to do tomorrow. And then I write in between that the things I want to do. And I make room for it. And I have to follow that list the next day. Uh, I try to do that and I try to be as productive as you can. It won't always work out because life sucks and sometimes life will say this is going to happen and you can't do none of this shit because you have to deal with this. And that's fine too. 
those are the those are the fun interesting days where you learn to grow and uh, mature uh but there's nothing wrong with being productive and wanting to do more with your time than just sit around and fucking stare at a screen uh but do watch us the underground broadcast and like and subscribe that's very important all right cheers What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?